And I would really love for all of us to band together on a mission of peace and love to help planet Earth evolve and all of humanity evolve quickly. So without much further ado, without any further ado, I'm going to pass the mic over to our feature, featured speakers, Dr. Sam, the discoverer of the Bosnian Pyramid Complex, and Corey Good. First question, yes. Uh, this question's for Corey. Can you hear me? Um, yesterday, you mentioned the importance of m not only meditating but taking action, and um, and you suggested instead of talking about aliens and star races that we um, instead perhaps share technologies and uh, new healing modalities and stuff like that that people might be more receptive to. And my question is: Is there or could there be a repository for, um, say, articles, reports? videos, websites that have this information that we could then share with our family, friends, and network? There's nothing like that available currently, but that is an excellent idea. It'd be nice to have a one-stop resource, but I want it to be a resource that's provided and put together by multiple people and like not just me or not, you know, it needs to be a, a collaborative effort. And because you know how it is right now in the community, there are so many people that are, like I said yesterday, that are stuck in their own little belief systems, and they formed little formed little denominations, and they're behaving like the uh, the right wing Christians that they like to make fun of, you know. Um, so we need to break out of that, and the best way to do that is for us all to to work together and have information that's available to share, like you said, that doesn't uh, lean towards any one denomination or belief system. Thank you. I've seen Santa Claus. Um, I've wondered about genetic experiments at Fort Bragg in 73, so I was born there. And my uncle Stan worked for GE six months on, six month, uh, one month off. And like, how do you go about approaching someone? Because um, he always told me you just bite on people for 12 hours a day, <laughs> which I totally believe. But maybe he knows more, and how do I approach him? Because I wouldn't want to put him at risk for a mysterious death. <laughs> So your question is how to approach? Yeah. Well, you have to tailor your approach to each individual. That individual is going to be more scientific-minded, of course. So like I said, um, speaking with them, um, not in a combative way, you know, sitting there saying, hmm, material sciences have um, evolved so much over the last hundred years, but we're still using the same combustion engines that we were in the late 1800s, or that technology. You know, can you explain the discrepancy in uh, acceleration of those technologies? You can open a, a very innocuous conversation with them, and then you can begin to lead it into, um, you know, electrogravitics and uh, healing technologies and get their opinion on it. I wouldn't give them have them drink from a fire hose in the beginning, plant seeds, and then come back often in water. <laughs> if we overwhelm people, we're going to do more harm than good because they're going to pull back and clam up. Hey, Corey. Um, question on channeling and channelers. I'm just wondering if in your experience in the 20 and back um, on the glass pads or in your experience outside of that, if you had um, any information on Cryon and Bashar, uh, both of them are American-based channelers. Over 20 years, I've been following both their work extensively. Uh, Bashar is channeled by Daryl Anka. He lives in Los Angeles. And Lee Carroll is the channel for Cryon. Cryon basically would express itself as the angel that created the Earth's magnetic grid, and it has been here since the beginning of Earth's creation kind of helping humanity along until we here we are today going through the ascension. Bashar's basically, if you listen to his work, he's um, about a five foot tall great alien from the uh, Sasani planet, 2,700 years in our future. That's here as well to help through the ascension process. They both came in around the same time, the harmonic convergence around 1987. So they've been doing their part to, like you, kind of raise the vibration of the audiences and hopefully get the message of their version of disclosure or truth to the community. So they've got pretty big followings. They've both said, and I've been following almost 20 years each, so much of what you've said yourself the past couple of years that I've been following you, it's incredible. Just even where we are right now in the solar system and going through the, the, the waves of energy we're in, Cryon said that entire story many, many times over the past couple of years before I heard you say it. So I'm just wondering, how does the Secret Space Program look at those entities that are also been here doing their role, and do you have any information to share on that? Um. 
how, how does the secret space program look at people like Bashar? Yeah, do they try to stop them because they're telling truth or spreading information that's not in line with their information? Or You know, I really don't know. I, have, I did not hear of, uh, I, I don't know the other person, but Bashar I, I know of because immediately when I came out, I started to get a lot of questions about um, their information. Uh, the other person I'm not aware of. Lee Carroll. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I just, I'm not aware of. Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. a lot of people are receiving information like they are through channeling and other means. And the only channeling that, I was a, that was mentioned when I was in the secret space program or in the programs was uh, the raw material. Mm -hmm. And they wanted the... Uh, upper brass to read it and be familiar with it, but the rest of everyone else, they uh, they would tell us it's Luciferian, you know, it's 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 from the devil. And uh, a lot of the uh, military types that were participating in these programs came from very uh, conservative Christian backgrounds, and um, the powers that be know when to wave that little Satanism or uh, uh, Luciferian flag to cause a visceral reaction in those types of people. And you know, we've seen it done recently with me and some of my people. They try to say we were devil worshipers and stuff to get people to clam up and um, you know, divert their attention. I would assume that they would do something similar uh, to Bashar and, and the other person up in the programs, but they were not mentioned when I, um, when I was there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Just, just on that note, since you mentioned the Lucifer and the way they try to maybe trick you into thinking that's not good. It, it worked with me. Yeah. It worked with me. I had stayed away from the raw material for a long time uh, in forums and other places. If someone mentioned it, I had a reaction of, oh, uh, the people I trusted told me that it was Luciferian. So I stayed away. It wasn't until very recently that I took a look at the material and read it. The, um, the people in the programs that were above you, that were giving you all of this information, your in, the, in, in the, yeah, the programs, the secret space program. But Cor Corey, in that 20 year period, there has to be a lot of people like you that weren't, that were good people, intrinsically good. How, at a certain amount of time, didn't they kind of figure out that what you're doing is not good, especially if you see slave races on a planet or you're harming innocent life? How they, I was on the research vessel for years before I found out that there was a slave trade going on. And it was only because of, uh, I had uh, a personal relationship with uh, this certain officer, and she had, because she did work on the communication system, she had quite a bit of access that I, I never got to go to certain parts of the ship. Well, she was able to do so, and she began to socially engineer the different men that were there. And uh, because she had somehow gotten a um, little bit of information that something like that was going on, and uh, I didn't believe I didn't believe it, um, and we were brought in. She brought got us into a secure area where she opened up some pods, and we saw uh, bodies in it, and it wasn't just you know the slave trade, but there's you know uh, genetics that are being harvested and, and traded off world as well. Um, so the compartmentalization that goes on, um, you, you're not going to hear what you're not supposed to hear. It's just not going to happen. And almost all of the people that I worked with were engineers and you know scient scientists of different sorts, and uh, they were very focused <clears throat> on completing their task within the certain amount of years that they were pulled in, and they really didn't care about anything else. That's what they were focused on. They were not given information about anything that was going on outside of their program. These people were also very dedicated, and they were positive people. They were, they were told that they, what they were doing was going to uh, preserve the human species and uh, save the planet. So they, they fully had good intentions, the people I worked with. So I have a question for you, too. Could you both concur that the pyramid structures on the planet are part of geomancy, which is, uh, I believe, trying to raise the vibration back up or assisting, or maybe it's f helping filter or so? Thank you. What? 
um, is the Bosnian pyramid on ley lines, three ley lines? <clears throat> um, very recently, about two years ago, I started talking about, on Cosmic Disclosure, the cosmic web and the electromagnetic filaments that connect, I mean, everything in time and space is connected. Every galaxy is connected by these electromagnetic filaments, every star within those galaxies, and every planetoid or, or object within a star system is connected to the star through these electromagnetic filaments. Each planet has a grid system on it, and as the planet spins, the electromagnetic filaments, uh, in, like electricity, electric universe, connects to different nodes on the planet as it's turning around. From the information I received, they were balancing these nodes and controlling these nodes to where they were able to um, open these or predict the opening of these different portals. And it wasn't just, not just portals, they would use, uh, when the portal wouldn't open, there was a, still an energy signature in that, on that node area, in, in these sacred places. And they, uh, the shamans would use these energies for different things, for healing, for, um, uh, they would meditate within them and be able to reach other realms to pull down information. So I, I'm sure that there's a lot more to these grid systems than what I'm aware of, but what I, what told, what, what I was told was that uh, it had to do with the cosmic web and balancing and uh, completing circuits within the grid. Geomancy is just a part of the answer for the pyramids. What we have measured in the case of Bosnian pyramids, the location is extremely important. Below the Bosnian pyramid of the sun is a huge iron plate, as I explained yesterday. Iron generates electromagnetic fields. The pyramid, the most powerful geometrical shape, and it comes with the energies. It amplifies this electromagnetism. The second form of the energy, underground water streams, about 65 feet below the pyramid, underground water. Water flows, releases negative ions. The pyramid amplifies. The third one, 70 feet below the pyramid, is the second underground water stream. Be between the two parallel water streams, electricity is generated. The pyramid amplifies. Number four, natural magnetism. Number five, ultrasound. How do we get ultrasound? Electromagnetic field hits the quartz crystal. And then we have so-called piezoelectrical effect, which generates mechanical waves, which is a sound or infrasound or ultrasound. In our case, 28 kilohertz ultrasound. The pyramid amplifies this ultrasound. The next one, orgone energy or life or chi energy. In this conference hall, about 40%, outside 50, villages 70%, pyramids 100% of the orgone energy. So the pyramids are actually huge energy amplifiers or energy machines. At least the oldest, the biggest, the most superior on the planet. In China, in Mexico, in Bosnia, in Egypt. Thank you. I, I, want, I, want, I would like to ask a question real quick, or a couple. Uh, <laughs> you, you mentioned uh, uh, an iron plate. Has, have, has that been analyzed by a metallurgist? When we got the frequency of 28 kilohertz at the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, we sent results to three different labs in Croatia, Serbia, and Austria. And they said, you had to have iron plate, or it can be iron ore, or it can be even spaceship, at the depth of 2,240 meters or 1.3 miles. Because of the depth, of course, we did not get there. But we do have the you know, source of the electromagnetic fields. Okay, um, have, now I'm, from what you stated, I'm assuming that there's a high crystalline, crystalline uh, content in the rock. Have people witnessed or reported any type of plasma orbs in the area? <laughs> well, I, I asked for a reason, and he touched on it. Um, that it occurs in a lot of places, and what, oh, he did? Okay, well, well no, no, listen, he, he um, he touched on something that I, I found very interesting. Um, a lot of these mountains act like giant capacitors. And as he stated, they're almost always water streams 
going by. And the water, the friction of the water going across the crystalline uh, causes a piezoelectric effect that energy builds up in these mountains until it has to release. And what occurs is it releases these plasma orbs. What I was showing them, but not everyone was here. Let me just... <laughs> okay, Corey. Uh, this is me with Eric von Däniken. We are in the underground tunnels under the bars and pyramids. And his assistant is filming us. While he's filming us, we can see all those thousands of orbs flying around us of different sizes, at different speeds, going zigzag, having fun. The orbs, well, according to our research, they are simply spherical energy entities with intelligence. And, okay, I'll show him the river of orbs. Now, here is the floor, the cable, and the, you will see millions of orbs flowing, literally, River of orbs. Ch uh, there you go. Thank you. It's a clay. Clay. Clay is a natural flooring here in the tunnels. However, the walls are conglomerate with a lot of quartz crystal. So now almost none, and the next moment you will see millions of them. Look. No, you can't see them. Majority of people cannot. I did have a few psychics who claimed to see them. You can even invite them. Yes, sir. What have you learned how to harness those forms and programs? We don't harness them. They are simply different entities, like us. They simply vibrate differently than us. We don't need to harness them. Good. You need to let us know. We simply respect their existence. My question is about mind control. I'd like a quick definition of the techniques that are used for mind control and how we are able to break through that web and maybe how we can help yeah. others. They, they use, of course, energetic mind control to pacify people but and, and stuff like fluorides and stuff like that in our water. But the most effective mind control is the mind control we do on each other. They'll give us, um, you know, uh, social norms. That's, that's a type of mind control. Um, different religious uh, systems that are, uh, that we, uh, that are perverted at, and used as control systems. Uh, most of the um, mind control and control grid that's going on is self-imposed. They've tricked us into doing on ourselves. Uh, there's definitely an uh, energetic, uh, they've exploited these energetic grids that we have to cause them to put out um, fields that cause people to be more docile. Uh, so, you know, and then we have the more direct effects of like the uh, voice of God technology I've described on uh, cosmic disclosure and, um, and, uh, and other technologies that, you know, interfere with the uh, extremely low frequencies um, that the brain emanates you know, the magnetic fields of the brain. They've learned how to um, manipulate and, and read those, read the data coming through out of the magnetic field. They learned how to do that a long time ago. And not only can they read what's coming out, they're very adept at putting the information in, in, in pretty much the same manner. How can we help others break when, like just by being a loving being? I mean, yeah, being loving, meditating, and all that's really good, but it's, I mean, it takes, it's, it's going to take action, you know. You, the only way you can really wake some of these people up is to shake them. There's, there's also this uh, component of this artificial intelligence, very ancient artificial intelligence that uh, many different galaxies are dealing with. This uh, artificial intelligence, it's, it's a signal that's being broadcast and it affects our consciousness um, in, a, in a very heavy way. The solar flash that I'm 
told that it's going to occur. And like I said, with the scientists in the program, some of them believe it's going to be a 360 degree full circumference mass coronal ejection. Some of them think it's just going to be uh, some electromagnetic pulses that come from the sun. Uh, so there's, there's no agreement on what's going to occur, but there is agreement that whatever does occur from in this solar event is going to take out all of our electrical grid, all of our technology, which they then state is going to be the perfect time to bring in these newer technologies. And when, when this occurs, it will also um, affect, uh, it'll cl clear out the um, AI. The thought of a uh, solar flare, uh, mass coronal ejection is very scary. But uh, if, it, if it doesn't wipe us out, it's, uh, it's going to end up being very beneficial. It, it could be because I was told that uh, they didn't say three days. They said that the entire uh, circumference of the sun was going to uh, be a mass coronal ejection, is what a lot of these scientists believe, and that the sun for a number of days will become like a giant sunspot, will be very dim, it, a number of days. Yeah, yeah that's, David likes to, uh, to, to make things, you know, uh, match certain things, but... Yeah, but yeah, I was told uh, a number of days. Um, yeah. I, mean, it, I mean, it takes eight minutes for the light to re for, go from the sun to earth for us to reach it. I mean, if, if something like that occurred on the sun, we're not going to know for eight minutes. Hi, Corey. Have you heard anything that they're going to do a test on the grills, grids next month, like shut down part of it at different areas? Uh, of the electrical grid? Yes. Uh, no, I haven't heard anything about that. Uh, my question's for Dr. Sam. Um, I'm curious, uh, has your team or any other team discovered any gravitational anomalies? Like, I understand that you said the resonance frequency was like the levitation frequency. Um, I was just curious to know or like see if you've any found, every, found uh, any stones floating or was that resonance just used to like maybe make the stones levitate into place and it's stuck with that frequency? Thanks. We do measure 28 kilohertz ultrasound in the tunnels and on the top of the pyramids. Sun and the moon, a dragon, love, earth, tumulus, which are the part of the complex. 28 kilohertz frequencies, what I explained yesterday during my lecture. Who was at my lecture yesterday anyway? Oh, there were 10 people. So. When you do experiments with the ultrasounds, 21 kilohertz, 22, 23, when you come to 28, then you can see that very light objects like ping pong balls, they can start levitating. This is the frequency we measured in the tunnels. You walk through the tunnels, you feel light. But on the other hand, your first question, uh, gravitational force, I don't think it has anything to do with the ultrasound frequency. Uh, we did measure, you know, gravitational force. It's regular, like outside. However, the ceilings in the tunnels are conglomerate. So it's just sand, pebbles, rocks. No binding material. So when you look at it, it shouldn't be there. It should come down to the floor. But it's standing there. And uh, I had one of our friends, you know, she feels the energies. She can see the energies. She told me that at the original time when they built those tunnels, they used some type of plasma to keep the ceiling up. Of course, for me, it's very hard to explain to mainstream archaeologists, hey, you know, we have some plasmas there, <laughs> by the way. They make sure that the ceilings are not come down. But <laughs> just in case, we do place wooden support in every tunnel that we open. Hi, Corey. I'm so happy you could make it into the East Coast here, and I hope to see you in the Washington, D.C. area sometime soon, where I live. Um, but anyhow, uh, my question is, I have 50 questions, but my most urgent question, my most curious question is, I had read or even maybe heard on one of your programs how the Alliance was thinking of taking out these, um, these platforms or maybe space stations that were orbiting the Earth that were um, using, um, I don't know, uh, what source or what energy it was to, to, to control us. There were like three of them. 
that he was talking about. I think this this came from David Wilcock, and they are thinking of taking these out. and And if they did that, it would have the effect that uh, we would have like an acid trip uh, on our consciousness. And uh, it got me thinking about. It'd be more like coming off of Vicodin cold turkey. Yeah, something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, would, it thinking, would not be a pleasant experience. Yeah, exactly. And I was also thinking about uh, how the, 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 the orbs that have been dampening uh, all of these energy fields are, are basically dissolving away or, or, or going away, uh, having less effect on the dampening. What can we expect from all of these, these cosmic energies that uh, essentially we're going to be unprotected from them very soon, if not already? What are your thoughts? What, do you, what, is, what is the information that you have on this right now? In terms of the effects on this, how is, how is these, these new energy waves that are coming in? Okay, well, the, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I explained this yesterday. Um, as our solar system, our solar system is passing through, um, you know, we use the esoteric, you know, a high vibratory, you know, area mm -hmm. of uh, the galaxy. But it's uh, basically a, a, a gas cloud, an energetic gas cloud. And as we pass through it, it's spinning, and we're like a dynamo going through this high energetic cloud. The energy feeds in through the north and south pole of the um, electromagnetic field of the sun. It then feeds, uh, comes out from the sun. It, and the same thing happens to Earth. As these energies are coming, um, leaving the sun, they are interacting with the Earth's magnetic field mm -hmm. and causing an electric reaction to where it goes into the north and south poles and a lot of these energies are emanating out through these grids and um, and, uh, and, and and just you know like mountains uh, you know right. like we discussed before that uh, uh, we're able to carry the electric charge well would you say that we're kind of experiencing the early effects now of kind of like an end time madness yes Okay. Yes, it's, a, it, it's affecting uh, the consciousness of, of, of everyone and everything on the planet. Uh, but getting to this grid system, uh, this is what they called an Orion grid system. It was put in out, out there eons ago. And um, it causes um, um, a field to, to go around the Earth. That they're not all space-based. Some of them, uh, they utilize uh, the, the grid the ley lines, the grid. What, um, what the um, parts of the alliance have discussed is that they want to shut off this grid. So one of the reasons that we're having end time madness is A, because of this energetic increase. But not only do you have this energetic increase coming from the sun, but the beings that control this mind control grid have had to turn it all the way up to max for it to have the same effect. And we're being hit by all these different scalar waves, electromagnetic waves, and uh, uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that uh, we don't even really know how to measure. That is affecting the consciousness of everyone on the planet. I mean, we're seeing it right now, the end time madness. You see, you know, people that are positive, that are starting to kind of bliss out, um, people that are very negatively oriented, that are becoming more so, um, and they can't hide it anymore. They can't hide the, the negativity. And then the people who have mental illnesses are having a lot of difficulty. They, they are, are, and they're gonna, it's gonna get worse. So um, I hope that answers your question. I have a question for Dr. Sam. Um, when I was watching your video for the first time, I did notice what you pointed out yesterday that the pyramids, the corners of the two sides look like they go down much farther than what the base is you're measuring. When you look at where the tunnels are that are going through the pyramids, are they down in that lower section or are they just in the top area? Officially, we use number of 220 meters, about 720 feet as the height of the biggest one, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. But the tunnel entrance and if we look at the topographic map, it's about 280 meters, or about 900 plus feet. So, officially, we would come below the pyramid. However, 
On some of the maps, we can see that actually the height of the pyramid is much more, about 1,200 feet, which would mean that would get, we will get actually inside the pyramid using the tunnels. And so far, they are all leveled. But we work only on the first level of tunnels. Just last year, we discovered the second level of tunnels, about 40 feet below the first one. And it seems that there are between three and the seven level of tunnels under the ground. So after 12 years, we are still really scratching the surface. And also, that beam of energy that comes off the top of the pyramid, have you studied that at all? Like, do people have healing if they sit there? Is it good to sit on the top of the pyramid? Like, what, what is, how does that frequency affect the body? Okay, let me answer that question. And from that, my answer, I would like to ask Corey a question. So let me show you just a few <laughs> slides. Let me get everyone else involved in this. So it will be easier to follow the whole thing. So this is the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. So from here up 220 meters, 722 feet. When we started the excavation, three, four feet below the soil, we are finding rectangular blocks, which we have analyzed at seven institutes for materials. It's artificially made concrete. Some people call it geopolymer concrete. Some people call it synthetic concrete, much better quality than ours. So if we, on this photo, remove this green color, change it to brownish, this is what you are getting. This is probably the original look of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Now, on this illustration, here is the Sun Pyramid, 220 meters. Now here we removed the greenery, and you see how this side goes all the way down to the bottom of the valley. So now we are talking about 1,200 feet. So if we go back in time, the probable look of the whole valley of the pyramids. So the sun, the moon, dragon, love, temple of Mother Earth, five structures. But the reason we came here when we started finding the purpose of pyramids, we are using different scientific disciplines. On the PIP camera developed by Dr. Oldfield, to the right we can see the town of Isoko in the central Bosnia, and bioenergy fields, they are all horizontal. That's the natural ambiental fields. But the moment you get to the Sun Pyramid, to the left, and to the Love Pyramid, we can see vertical fields. Meaning, we have energy machines, energy is generated inside the pyramid, energy is getting released through the top, hitting those horizontal fields, they become vertical. <coughs> or, in more concrete terms, now we can see it 3D. Now, the Sun Pyramid, the town of Isoko, and look at inside, the red color. The energy, it's getting accumulated. So we'll be seeing more and more of the red. You see, red, red, everything is red now. Energy is getting accumulated, going through the top, hitting those horizontal fields, they become vertical. But now why I'm doing this? I want to show something else. I want to show something else. Let's look what at it. What is the blue energy? Well, these are different frequencies. Look at this. This thermal signature, which is different than the others. You see how the, the shape is oval? The moment when we are getting the most of the red, it will be next moment, this oval-shaped vehicle is coming inside the pyramid. And then, a few moments later, you see, it's leaving. Like a oh dwarf. Yes, it looks like the spaceship because of its size. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Here it is. This is a part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> and then last year, what we did, we sent drone with different scientific instruments above the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, checking on electromagnetism, and then separately on electrical field, on magnetic field, on temperature, 
on, uh, you know, organ energy, ultrasound, infrasound, seven different measurements we've done. The most interesting stuff were in electrical field, electrical, no magnetism. Magnetic aspect is not there. It looks like this. This is zero meters. This is the top of the Bosnian period of the sun. We have this energy beam, electrical in nature, of 13 feet. And then it starts to expand. At the height of 21 meters, or about 70 feet, it is the widest and strongest. And then it's getting narrow. And then it expands, getting narrow, expands, getting narrow. So these are the scalar waves, which you just mentioned, the scalar waves. Their properties is they are much quicker than the speed of light. And then we are checking where is this, the scalar rays, where are they oriented to? And here's the orientation. You see the sides, east, west, north, and south. In the afternoon, the orientation was mostly to the southwest. At the noontime, south. Now, let's see how our sun moves. In the morning, east. Noontime, south. Afternoon, southwest. Evening, west. Right? Sunrise. So, the scalar waves, noontime, south, in the afternoon, southwest. Meaning the scalar waves follow the path of the sun. And those who were here yesterday, they could hear that we also measure the ultrasound in this very energy beam, which is basically the information. So the scalar waves are oriented to the sun, so there is a probably communication between the two. And then using the sun as the cosmic gate going through other solar systems. So for the first time, it's been measured and scientifically proved that there is a connection between sun and the moon. So we do have scalar waves on the top of the sun pyramid. So now my next, my question for you, we could see the, that oval shaped vehicle coming to the pyramid, which is obviously energy machines, using it as the gas station. That's one thing. And then also the scalar waves produced by the pyramids. Any comments there? Yes. Um, basically what I was shown is that the ley lines or the natural grid system, they were manipulated and used in ancient times by off-world groups to create, to, cr to change those ley lines into basically like a circuit board. That these um, different ancient structures, such as pyramids, were then shooting energy out straight up. And most of the time, it is just energy, it's like shining a flashlight into nowhere. But as the Earth spins and different star systems rotate into the path, they are activated. And it is sending this faster than light energy through these electromagnetic filaments between the stars. It's utilizing the cosmic web. This, is, this can be used for bi-directional information sending, like a, uh, a Wi-Fi system. The conclusion we are getting, but then in our case, the good thing is that this is the only archaeological site, important archaeological site, where we are totally open. All others, Egypt, Mexico, Peru, Egyptologists do not let physicists, engineers to do the measurement because they stick to the story, tombs for the pharaohs. And uh, if you, I know there is a lot of questions, but if you don't mind, when we're talking about this energy beam, we also detected the ultrasound inside this beam. So what we did, we converted the ultrasound to something that we can hear. So I'd like to, to run this uh, audio file. I think it's very interesting and uh, maybe somebody can decipher what it means.
<laughs> so, we were on the top of, uh, there was a question uh, actually about the top of the pyramid where we detected the energy beam. When you go there, five minutes is fine. After five, ten minutes, you become a little bit dizzy. And then, uh, you know, dowsers came, they measured on the Bovis scale. Bovis scale, humans are from six, seven thousand Bovis to 20, 25,000 Bovis. Everything up to 25, 30,000 Bovis, very pleasant. Over there, 50,000 bovis. So it's just too much. Uh, so in this, within this energy beam, 13 feet, we measure the ultrasound. Now we notice when we are measuring the electrical field that it's getting stronger as it moves away from the pyramid. It's getting stronger, which is a, a kind of anomaly because you would expect if the source of the energy is inside the pyramid or below the pyramid, that the signal is getting weaker and weaker. But here, it's getting stronger and stronger. So theoretically, this energy beam can go through our solar system, can go. And with this ultrasound, obviously, we have a form of the communication. Ultrasound is the information. So the pyramid becomes a very powerful communication device. And we, again, we are the first one who are proving that. I believe it's the same thing with the Egyptian pyramids, but they simply do not allow people to research that. One of the reasons they removed the capstones a long time ago is to remove that communication. Um, now, my question is, that sound, is it constant or does it spike? I mean, uh, what, what, what I'm wondering is, as if during the time if, it, if the signal changes, have you star charted to see if stars are in alignment, if that's affecting the, the, the field? Because that does sound a little bit like some of the NASA sounds of the stars and sounds of, you know, uh, cosmic sounds. Okay, what, what we could see is that the peak is 28 kilohertz. Then it comes again to 28 and 28. And so we have the same distances. We have blocks of ultrasound coming in blocks. And then we measure the nearby hills. We don't have the same peaks, we don't have the same distances. We even measure one pyramid hill in Italy, Monte Pavione, four triangular faces. But again, no same peaks, no same distances. Just the Bosnian pyramid of the sun, because it is an energy machine. You have those blocks. Yes, yes. The, okay, like, like a sine wave. Are, are these peaks consistent? Or, or do they change? It's, is it very consistent? Okay. Okay. Uh, w one of my next questions doesn't apply now. I was going to ask if you took uh, and, and did an analysis or a chart of these uh, sine wave peaks and change it from, uh, convert it from analog into digital to see um, if, there, if there's any type of information that can be uh, gleaned from it. Yeah, it sounds like it. It, this, it sounds like it's um, a, a giant uh, wireless network communicating. Uh, one of the reasons I was also asking about the peaks uh, and valleys of the sine waves uh, on, uh, uh, in the measurements is that, you know, I, I was wondering if uh, star alignments were having any effect as we rotate uh, and the, the point of the pyramid is in alignment with a star if uh, you're able to, you know, trace that and see if there's any changes. Well, when it comes to alignments, our first question is how many pyramids we have. In Egypt, we are talking about three, Teotihuacan, three main pyramids, Valencia in Spain, three main pyramids, Montevecchia in Italy, three main pyramids, and they have exactly the same layout. In Bosnia, right now, we have done uh, excavations on five pyramidal structures. Most probably we have seven because there are two pyramid hills, but completely private land, we cannot do an excavation. So if it is seven, then we can be talking about the uh, Pleiades. But then the question is how many originally, because what we have as radiocarbon dating is 29,200 years. So we go back for 30,000 years, at least two huge flood waves that would destroy smaller structures. 
if it was nine, then we can talk about seven sister of Pleiades and the father and the mother. But as we know, the star cluster of Pleiades have 104 stars. So I don't think this is like the, the major the, the, the thing as far as the pyramids, because for me, it's even more important the layout of three main pyramids, sun, moon, and dragon, they form perfect equilateral triangle. It is very obvious. Egyptians, you know, they have this triangle, but it's not regular, it's not. But here, we have equilateral triangle. Have you looked at 25,000 years ago, the star charts from that time era, and compared it? Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sorry, I've been waiting a while. Uh, <laughs> I forgot my question. I was wondering if your arm was getting tired. Yeah, you know, it is. It is. I'm not that strong. Um, I want to take you back to a time when you um, discussed something that happened with Kyrie, when um, she did something on you and you were able to release some kind of a negative, negative influences that were coming out of your body. You said it was kind of quite startling. Yeah, and um, I'm, I have concerns about those personally, um, and I want to know how you go about doing a self-cleaning in terms of something like, like that I have? Well, it's not a one-time cleaning. Every, I, I, everyone has them and you, you can clear them and usually they come back. But how do you clear them? I mean, it's, it's um, a... Well, um, and in this case, she used this crystal that, you know, she rubbed and then it started making this tone, kind of like when you do the outside of a glass to make that high-pitched noise. and that somehow drove them out. Um, now, um, if the, and, and they connect to your energetic, um, your, to your chakras, to your energetic centers. If um, you have a, like a behavior or, or something that's going on that's keeping that, I guess, kind of portal open uh, to allow them to come back, they're gonna continue to return. Um, identifying what type of entities they are is, is important and uh, figuring out how to change your behavior or your environment to prevent them from coming back is, um, is just as important as removing them. Okay. Yes, I, I mean keeping yourself in a certain vibration makes it very difficult for them to stay attached but you know, that's very difficult because when they're attached to you, they're keeping your vibration low. And so, I mean, you're going to have to, you have to over, overcome and then um, keep your, uh, your vibration high through diet, uh, through different practices like meditating. Do you do anything to practice that? I mean, do you practice meditation? Yes, I, I meditate. I, I, I presume that everyone here meditates whether they think they are or not. Anytime you're sitting back in deep thought and daydreaming, you're in a meditative state. Okay. So uh, we, we try to make things a little too magical with meditation sometimes. You know, it's, it's something that the body naturally does. Everyone meditates. You know, they go into you know, these different states. You know, um, you know, you go into deep theta when you sleep, you know, when you're dreaming. But yeah, I mean, meditation is important, but you know, we, we, we don't need to make it uh, a completely magical kind of thing. It's something that our bodies naturally do as we're going in and out of different states uh, of, of awareness as we're waking up and going to sleep throughout the day. Um, a lot of times you'll feel yourself pull back and you start to daydream, uh, you know, and you're going into a meditative state. Um, but having a more focused meditative state focus with intent, you know, is, is important, you know, at, of the intent of not just going into the meditative state, because we all do it, but to uh, then um, be able to, kind of, it's kind of like lucid dreaming, you know, everyone dreams, but uh, every once in a while someone will have a lucid dream, but once you learn how to recognize a lucid dream and how to control it, then you start to have a different experience, and it's the same with meditating and getting into those different states of consciousness. From, from my experience anyway. Yeah, I have um, a question about um, on your latest video I was just listening to before I came here about the Anshar. You had mentioned they were trying to move into a temporal route, a temporal anomaly to escape the cosmic energies. I wonder if there's anything you can share on that um, more about 
Yes, what they've told me is that uh, every, every cycle, which is 20-something thousand years, they sequester themselves inside one of these temporal anomalies. Um, during these cycles, the energetics change quite a bit. They, uh, they're fourth density beings, and uh, it's basically consciousness is what we're talking about. Uh, ascension, is, is, it first happens through an expansion of consciousness, and then everything in the physical realm kind of follows. You know, uh, as I stated yesterday, uh, we're not all of a sudden going to have telekinesis and be flying around the planet when these energies occur. It's going to take, uh, you know, a long time for us to kind of acclimate to them and, and learn how, learn how to, to utilize them. So, Does that affect them in some other way that's different than us? Yes. It's, I mean, we are susceptible to these fields. So um, let's say a field that is uh, our consciousness is on a certain vibratory level right now, a, a frequency. Theirs is at a much different frequency, and they're affected by these high frequencies coming in in a different way than, than we are. It's, it's not necessarily going to give them a bump up in ascension as it is us, because we're, we're lower down on the frequency level. They're above the frequency level of the energies coming in, you know, because they are basically, they, they claim to be us from the far future after we've already made this consciousness uh, ascension, this uh, uh, fourth density shift. Hi. Uh, hi, Corey. Um, actually, my question is a little bit close to what he said, too. Um, when we heard about the meditation during total eclipse and how successful it was, um, and now we were told it's only a small amount of light workers going to maintain and steward that. To be, so we hopefully we will have an optimal timeline. So my question is about how do we coordinate that? Um, seems like we scatter around different regions, and we probably when we get together on this kind of event. Is there a plan to help us to coordinate the effort? Because it's, look at this is how important, very small, very small amount, very committed light workers to do this thing. And it's, we know it's very hard to. Every single one of us go to different um, personal, family, all the obstacles. This is not the easiest thing to do at all. Right. Yeah. It, it's any any time anyone tries to form some sort of uh, cohesion for people to work together in that way, something magically pops up that divides people. And these are basically operations that are, are done by you know these different intelligence groups. They do not want us coming together and mass meditating. You know, it's, it's, this is an uphill battle for us to be able to organize. Um, you know, the, um, I, I stated yesterday, our co-creative consciousness, we have the ability, not only do we have the ability, we're co-creating this experience right now. Everything is a vibratory illusion. We're given it cohesion by um, uh, some sort of an agreement between us. We're agreeing that we're going to co-create, you know, this environment. That's a lot of power, and that's also the power of these cabal groups. We hear about the black magic they use against us. Well, the black magic that they use against us is our own co-creative consciousness, abilities. We manifest things. They plant seeds in us, and then they give us a, a, a catalyst, usually a heavy emotion of fear. And that catalyst will, will cause us to manifest what they want us to. Instead you know, of us manifest, being tricked to manifest a prison planet, once we learn our co-creative abilities, we're going to be able to manifest whatever future we want. That's what they have to keep us from discovering. And that's one of the main reasons why it's been so hard to bring all of these people together to you know, form a group that's going to do mass meditations that are focused on one intent. That's really what needs to happen. All of us that come together and we're all meditating on slightly different things, if we can find one intent to come together on, we're going to be able to manifest it on a, on a small level, but it's going to throw the balance off of, of, of this black magic uh, uh, reality they've created. Yeah, just meditating alone is going to, uh, because, you know, the hundredth monkey effect, we've got a, um, 
uh, there's a super consciousness that you know we all tap into you know the akashic and you know and then you know different levels so if yeah if they can uh, prevent us from tapping into that information or uh, getting uh, or just getting a bunch of people even if they have different intent the um, uh, if you get like a fraction of one percent of the population all meditating even if it's on different intents at the same time it's going to affect the mass consciousness and that they they do not want that happening because they are f affecting the mass consciousness in a way uh, that allows them to control excuse me sir sure i've been visiting very interesting communities on the planet that were trying to combine spirituality with the physical aspect. For example, in Italy, close to Turin, there is a place called Damanhur. Probably some of you heard about Damanhur. They've been there for almost four decades. Meditation is part of their daily life, several times a day. Very spiritual community. Then Oroville in uh, India, southeastern India, on the Indian Ocean. 50 different nations, village of 2,500 people, again, meditation, the focus meditation is part of their daily life. Kibbutz in northern Israel, several communities here in the U.S. But then eventually what becomes a problem is the power struggle, money, how to organize their communities. So even when there is an organized effort of hundreds or several thousands of people, you know, it seems that for some reason, one or another, they are not able to, you know, uh, get there on the track all the time. The problem with our society, the last seven, eight thousand years, we have, you know, less than one percent, you know, having most of the resources, 99 percent of us not being organized. We try to do something good, like he says, intelligence is there not to allow us to do that. So we need to get better organized. We need to get organized. Conferences like this, seminars, people talking about this, sharing the knowledge, the information, it becomes the major thing. <coughs> Corey, what about these other races that are living inside the earth? Um, it seems that uh, they have no choice than to follow the plan the Anchar have of revealing themselves, because once their cover is blown, their cover is blown. Um, they don't they didn't want to go along with revealing their identities and their, and their, their history. And are they just going to do nothing or, or, or what do they, what do they intend to do? Well, it, it depends on the group you're talking about. There are many. And I know that's the in, in the programs, these bases where they called them embassies and they would call these non-terrestrials people, no matter what they look like. Um, now, now, what's the root of your question again? What are they? Well, well, oh, okay. what are they going to do? I mean, yeah. uh, now some of these some of these groups um, want to come out under their own um, uh, under their own plan, I guess you could say. Um, some of these more negatively oriented um, people are, are non-humans, uh, such as the ones that are living under Antarctica right now. Uh -huh. They really want to have a future to where we have um, disclosures in a way to where we find out that, hey, there's an ancient civilization that's been discovered under the ice. This ancient civilization didn't come from Earth originally. This ancient civilization, that bloodline was genetically ma uh, mixed with the beings that were here on Earth, the humans that were here on Earth, to create a... Uh, bloodline to, to control the planet. Mm -hmm. This, um, what they would like to do, these negative groups, is for us to find out about these civilizations under the ice in a way that makes them look like divine, makes us accept a divine right of kings and begin to look at them as demigods. Um, you know, and they're gonna, you know, be able to say, you know, we have, we come from this great race that you know, once you know, inhabited multiple solar systems, you know, we have all of this sacred knowledge that's going to help the planet you know, subjugate yourselves to us. Well, you have positive beings that do not want that to happen, such as I was speaking recently uh, with intelligence people. They're very aware of the different timelines uh, that are going on. We were not supposed to win World War II. We were given a two-front war with two very... Um, aggressive enemies, so-called enemies, and uh, America wasn't supposed to make it through it the way it did.
but America was receiving assistance from a different non-terrestrial group that had a different agenda, we would like to think they're positive. Uh, the same group that helped our forefathers set up this uh, country, you know, to begin with. They, this, there, was a, there were a lot of hands in creating this country. It, very, uh, it was a miracle that it came to be a, in, at all because of the uh, adversity that they had. So there are multiple agendas and multiple plans in competition with each other right now. The one that wins out is going to become the new reality. One of the reasons we, we really need to get organized, put aside all these different denominational UFO belief systems, and just say none of us really knows the truth, but we want the truth, and just agree to that and that alone and work together. Thanks, Kari. Um, so I have a question about something a little bit different, but lately, um, if you look around different news outlets, there's these images or video clips of um, anomalies of physical matter kind of froze, suspended in space. So you'll see like planes attempting to land, but the plane is actually just staying still. You can hear the exhaust or you'll see like a, a bird flying. But the bird is flapping his wings and it really looks like it should be going far, but you can kind of walk 360 degrees around a bird. It's just staying there but flapping his wings. Have you seen anything like that? And um, is this like a time anomaly, or ha do you have any explanations or any insights on things like that? Uh, no, I, I would have a lot of questions, as in where this is occurring. Is it close to some of these energy grids? Um, these, um, we have, a, I said yesterday, we have a lot of time at our current level. Of, we know, we've understood, we can understand, now, okay, there are gravitational waves, um, you know, space can be... Uh, compressed and expanded, but we have a hard time with time. You know, these timelines uh, that, that, that people just, they can't grasp it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the uh, time and space are both elastic. You know, they both snap back. Now, during these energetic changes, there are going to be different points on, uh, within the grid system on the planet that weird anomalies are going to happen. I don't know if this is one of them or not because I'm not really familiar with it. Well, a lot of these occurrences are um, by airports where the plane is actually landing. And, and now the video has kind of expanded, so you're seeing the point of view of inside the plane where people are in the plane looking out the window thinking, like, it's, we're not moving. It's very clear. And then from the outside of the airport, people are recording the planes. You're hearing the exhaust and everything, but the plane is just sitting there very still, not moving at all, and many other points. But yeah, yeah. I'll look into that. I, I'm not familiar with it. Okay. Uh, so I would like to ask, Corey, have you heard anything or do you have any opinion on the crop circle phenomenon? Uh, I've been there. I've visited it. I've talked to a lot of people who have studied it for 25 years, and um, they do see these plasma orbs creating these. Uh, things in the fields. So I'm curious what you think of that, and also I'm curious what you think of the chemtrail activity. It seems to have slowed down this year, but it was really heavy the last five years, and probably for longer than that. There, in the programs, there were um, several um, different theories about what was going on with the crop circles. Um, I basically just heard the scientists discussing the different theories. There was, there was no conclusion um, at that point. The, um, you know, 9-11 uh, and the uh, chemtrail thing are, are two things that I just don't have a whole lot of information on. Um, but it's, it's definitely, you know, I, I've, I've talked to a couple people in intelligence agencies and they've stated that um, some of these, the spraying, is to um, reflect um, energy coming in, but some of them are created just to bounce um, communications waves off of. So that's, that's the extent of my knowledge on that. Uh, I don't know who's creating them. I know that we've been able to reproduce them, you know, um, with, uh, in, in the programs, they've been able to reproduce them, but uh, I don't know if this, this code has been deciphered within them or not in the programs. 
I, uh, I have a question for both of you, if you heard about uh, the stone circles in South Africa, like 200,000 of them? Yes. And what do you know about that? From Michael Tellinger? Well, he's been, of course, investigating Adam's calendar, which is very interesting, astronomically. But also, he's been doing a lot of energy measurement inside the ultrasound, electromagnetic fields, you know, decibels. You move out of the circle, none of those measurements are there, only within the circle. So, probably it's telling us there is something below energy potent place. You got circle, when you have a circle, you focus the energy and stuff like that. Yes. But as far... Yes, yeah, that, that is one, this is part of the, of, of the deal. But the stone circles, on the African continent, there are, according to Michael, not hundreds of thousands, but about 20 million. Sometimes they are very small. Sometimes there is like five circles. Sometimes there are more, two or three. And uh, now it was a huge construction effort. You would need hundreds of thousands of people for that. And as we know, that the African continent has been the least inhabited in the past. So we did not have this labor to do that. So how it was done? Very often he shows during his presentations that power of sound can arrange or rearrange sand or on a larger territory, stones. So it's very possible that it has been done that way. But it's very, very ancient phenomena. So it's very interesting, yeah. Uh, that's questions for Corey. Um, I guess ever since I heard you speak about um, uniting the world with uh, mass meditations, that like that lit me up. And I've already been doing that to some degree with, with the International Day of Peace. It happens every September 21st. So I've been working with a group of people around the planet that are already doing that. And so we're looking at how to bump it up to the next level. And, and I got to the place where, where you just spoke about, like, if we had one intent, but how do you get such diverse, that's my uh, passion right now, how do you get such diverse ideologies and, and thought forms and beliefs to, to focus on one intent? And, and I think that that's, once I get that or, or feel that, I think that will help me to uh, really work with, with that aspect. First of all, we have to find an intent that everyone can agree on. Um, you know, it all, we have to overcome a lot of these different belief systems. Now, if, if you lower on the scale, none of the belief systems are going, not, you're not going to be able to find any merging. But the higher and higher you go up, um, idea-wise, as in, like, you know, if we're wanting uh, to have better crops, that's a regional thing that people are going to meditate on. Or if you want better weather, uh, people will focus on that. Um, but as you move up to... Um, a higher level, uh, like people, it's not hard to get people to focus on peace, right. you know, world peace. Yeah. Uh, so what we have to do is find uh, s some sort of intent that everyone can agree on and that there won't be any conflicts. That's the first step. Um, the second step of organizing it, um, you know, it's, we're going to have to do a lot of trial and error still to get this right because mm. the powers that be, as they say, are definitely on their heels right now and are doing anything they can to make sure that we don't come together mm. in that way. Yeah. So it is, like I said, definitely an uphill battle. Yeah. But uh, it, a lot of it's going to be trial and error, but it just takes the trial part. You know, we have, to, we have to do it. We have yeah. to try. Thank you. Um, thank you. That was very helpful. I just wanted to share a couple of things um, that I felt find most helpful to deal with the energetic forces now. And it, it came from... Uh, a teacher that I work with, his name was Swami Kripalu, and uh, he, was, he was a Kundalini master. His main practice was alternate nostril breathing. And, and, and what I've learned, what that does, it really helps to pre prepare our bodies and our, and our physicality and our nervous system to uh, move into these higher energy fields. And also for clearing um, is the Native American sweat lodge. So if there's a, if anybody, if you have an opportunity to be in a Native Lodge, that that's, helps to clear a lot of those entities. And so I needed to say that much. Thank you. Hi. 
I wanted to ask you, uh, you had posted something about uh, Netflix and that they were doing a 20 and back show. Could you share with us? On yes, that? it's very much in the planning stage. Um, what we're attempting to do in, in, um, is try to find different ways to get the information out and to use the tools of our enemy against us. Um, I, I stated yesterday, whenever you watch a movie, you'll go into like an alpha state, which is basically setting you up to, to be in a state that you're more susceptible to programming. Now, they're doing that in a covert way to uh, manipulate our mass consciousness. What we're hoping to do is in a very overt way, use those same tools, uh, use movies, use uh, different symbols in uh, like graphic novels and, and, and encourage people to, to put that information out in, in other ways in, in the same type of media that's used against us. If we can start to um, slowly awaken people or at least soften them, you know, uh, a little bit to where they're ready to awaken, it's going to, um, it's going to assist this effort that we're trying to do right now. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're working with uh, uh, some well-known writers and producers and stuff like that. Um, and we want to do um, a movie and a series about the 20 and back, which, you know, that's a very science fiction, sexy kind of topic. You know, people will want to watch it. Okay, you got them hooked. While doing that, put in different spiritual things, different things that are going to guide people to think, like, hmm, and, and challenge their own belief systems. Um, we want to do that, use a covert tool of the enemy to use in an overt way. Uh, but it'll be a good year and a half before that comes about. And, you know, we got, in, in the meantime, we need to find other ways to affect the mass consciousness through, you know, meditation and, and, and other things like what we're doing here. When you start getting, this is what I'm thinking, because you're talking to the choir here, it's getting to the more conservative. You know, if you get on Netflix, which is not like Gaia, which is a page, a lot of people don't even know about Gaia. It's just wonderful. It's something where more people who are more the conservative people I'm around anyways, to begin to have this information, even subtly. That's what we, I feel is very important, not just the... What's interesting is that the when it comes to the conservatives, most of the people who watch Cosmic Disclosure are conservatives. Uh, Gaia stated that they got the largest bump in viewers when they would advertise in Christian publications. So this is good. Now Netflix is another good one. Right, but we need to have um, numbers of the, yeah, money is, um, is definitely a problem. It's uh, a, cre a tool created by the enemy. And of course, we want to utilize that against the enemy. Because to be here and talk to people about it, we're talking to each other. It's wonderful. But I go out to my family, and we have no one to talk to. Well, no, well, yeah. You hit a wall. Right. Well, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but most of the choir is not singing. Most of the choir is sitting there looking at the lyrics. They're not. Uh, it's, it's all happening right here. They're not pushing it out. They're not sharing it. So the choir needs to start singing, but we need to find a song that uh, the target audience right, is going to accept. Exactly. And that, and that goes back to not approaching people with eight-foot-tall blue aliens and approaching them with more... Yeah. Well, not even that. You need to tailor your conversation for each person. You have to profile them a little bit. Hi, Corey. I have a question. Um, I had seen you on Gaia talk about Kari had offered to give you a sort of a mind meld to tell you who you were, who you are, and who you will be in the future. And at the time, you were not open to receiving that. Later, I heard you say that you were becoming more open to receiving that. Have you received that information? Or um, when you, if and when you do, would you share that with us? No, I have not received the information. Um, I have observed Gonzalez very closely because he has gone through that process and he literally became a, a different being. I mean, he is not the guy I, I knew before. Um, now, this may sound petty, but I was told that it would un profoundly affect 
my relationship with people I'm currently close to, like my children, my family. So it's a very selfish thing. I'm afraid, I'm worried that Gonzalez was one of the main reasons he was using, Gonzalez isn't his real name, obviously. Um, he has family down here. And he uh, was very concerned about them uh, being targeted as a way to get to him. Now, he has changed in such a way that he's become a different being on a different mission. And he, is, that, the, that relationship is not important to him anymore. Um, so, yeah, I have some intrepidation about that. If I, I've, I was told they offered, made that offer three times and I turned it down three times, if I ever get to a point to where I feel like I am ready for that, I am to approach them. And I am not there. Yeah. Hi, Corey. My name is Smarty, all over the internet. Earlier you mentioned about how people are using uh, technology, technology to manipulate matter, right? What if we were you? What if we can? What if we have the ability to do the same thing to combat what they're doing to us? We do have the ability. I know, because yeah. I'm one of them. Right. Yeah. Well, um, what's your question? My question is: Is there any way anyone of you guys would consider working with someone like myself who has the ability to do that? Well, we have to be willing, everybody, to work together. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely willing to work. <laughs> with anyone who has information or techniques um, and, uh, you know, to, and, and test them, you know, put them through some tiny scientific method to see, right. you know, what type of results we get. And if it's something that uh, turns out to be beneficial, then, of course, we'll do everything we can to try to get people to join together and, and adopt those, you know, new methods. Okay, because I have a, a website where people can go <coughs> and download free images and all you have to do is put them on your devices and they'll cancel our radiation and that's for free okay. thank you yeah what's the website it's holotech.biz h-o-l-o-t-e-c-h dot b-i-z how you doing Corey? how you doing Corey? uh thank you i was just wondering uh have there ever been any times that you've wished that you didn't have these experiences and lived a quote unquote normal life or do you feel yourself you're lucky to have experienced all this? Yeah, one of the, the biggest things I see from people, there are people that seem to be jealous, you know? Mm -hmm. I have people, uh, they're obviously not listening closely to me because um, <laughs> this is not a pleasant thing. When I'm meeting with these beings, they're, they're not patting me on the back and saying, oh, you're going to be such a, an important person. No, they're, they're pointing out what a jerk I am <laughs> constantly. And right when I think, okay, I've dealt with that. Like recently I, I talked about, you know, when I was very young, I grew up in a very crazy family. Lots of abuse, uh, you know, alcoholic uh, um, people that were veterans from different wars. And being an intuitive empath, I could read people. And the only control I had was controlling my environment, manipulating. And it became such a part of my personality that I didn't realize what a manipulator I'd become. Well, yeah. after I dealt with some of the things that they had shown me, and I thought, okay, I'm doing good, you know, I'm doing well. Well, they show me that about the mani manipulation part of myself. And they show me the free will that I violated in so many people going back 10, 11 years old. And that was a major punch in the breadbasket, you know. Uh, so I immediately, that was, I started focusing on that. And the only pat on the back they gave me is they said, you're one of the few people that if we point something out, you don't go through all this denial and everything, you, you do it, you know. They, they like that about me. But they keep bringing stuff. I mean, you know, I've been dealing with the manipulation thing, and then I'm not going to, it's very private, then the next thing, and then I'm feeling good about seeing that I'm, I'm getting that, you know, under control. I'm not doing that anymore. So then they show me another thing that's even more intimate and upsetting that I need to change. So um, 
I've gone through quite a metamorphosis through the process, you know, a lot of quick growth. They've, they called a lot of it uh, karmic quick burn, and it's been very uncomfortable. But this has been going on f uh, in some degree since I was five years old with the communications that I've had. So, you know, be careful what you wish for. I get emails, how can I get my son into the secret space program? I'm like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, you're not listening to me, you know? You do, no, you do not want to be a part of that. Um, yeah, uh, you know, most of it is that, you know, people, they just want, they want some sort of validation and they're not getting it. Yeah. And, and they become upset yeah. with those who are. But what really ticks them off is when I tell them what I learned recently is that it's their higher self that's determining if they get contact, what contact type of contact they will get, or what they need to do to prepare themselves for any type of contact. You know, so it's, it's occurring from our higher selves. So if you get mad that you're not having this type of contact, then you need to go inward and figure out, you know, why and what you need to do to make yourself ready or to put yourself in that vibration. But no, this has not been a, a real pleasant experience. Sue Greenwald and I'm the producer of the Empowered Light Holistic Expo. The Expo is held twice a year outside of Philadelphia in Oaks, Pennsylvania. My experience here has been awesome. There's a lot of energy here. There's a lot more energy than I expected. There really is. first-timer, it was actually more than I expected. All the vendors, they take their time, they explain things to you, and they make you feel welcome and warm. My experience at the Expo has been life-changing. Uh, I've learned a lot about myself that has been incredible. Well, it's much more than what I expected. Between the speakers, the vendors, and all the products I found, once again, the energy that's here, it's great. The people that I've met and the different speakers that I've listened to actually have enlightened my initial basic thinking of this way of life. So I would definitely say it's a positive experience and I'm so glad that I came. Light Expo really has the uh, pull of getting people from all different categories of light. Like last night we had two guys who've never been to the show before, didn't know anything about it, and they were having a blast. They were actually loving it because their wives dragged them here, but then they were buying more stuff than the wives were, so it was really cool. Well, There's just so oh, many things happening, so many different readings and stuff. I've never experienced so much in one area. I find things that I'm drawn to that it's changed my thinking about a lot of things. The Empowered Light Holistic Expo is different from any other expo because this is about centering your energy, centering your chakras. Most expos I go to are mostly health and wellness and they try to sell you products like with chemicals and things of that nature. This is all natural, all holistic and the energy is amazing. Well, I think it's very diverse. There is things that you wouldn't normally see at a regular expo or experience or actually have the chance to partake in as far as healing, um, positive vibes and good energy. It's really awesome. There's literally a tangible energy. There's good people here. There's good energy. There's good vibes here. Usually you go to the expos and there's like all kinds of EKG energy. It's like totally up and down. And here you have like a, you have a smooth vibration. matter what, even if you think it's outside of your comfort zone, come check out something new, experience something new. Come with an open mind. Come with an open mind and come just to experience and feel the energy. Come to this expo. Just do it. Don't even 
overthink it, you'll be pleasantly surprised. Come to the next expo. It's gonna be an amazing experience. We're literally gonna meet like kindred spirits. Our next expo is planned for April 27th through 29th, 2018. We're gonna have over 100 holistically oriented vendors and speakers in four rooms. Many of our talks, lectures, and workshops are free, included with your general admission ticket. Go to our website, www.empoweredlight.com, and be part of the change. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for being the brave person you were to come out and do all this stuff that you've been doing. I don't have the courage to do that, so I have to acknowledge I didn't that. either. Yeah. I, didn't, I was forced into it. I was pretty much outed and put out there, and right. then it just kind of snowballed. Uh, the question is, I, I guess you're aware that Elon Musk has decided he's going to Mars in a few years. How does the secret space program deal with somebody like him? Is he part of that, or is he on the outside, or what's the information? Um, just like during the Apollo mission, we had different uh, groups that were causing uh, setbacks for the programs. That occurs for these uh, corporate space programs as well. But I think that some of the, these different people that are starting these corporate space programs, they find out that if they start uh, towing the line and uh, working with, like, let's, let's say, you know, the International Space Station, well, Elon Musk, they're sending up rockets to bring material, you know, up, up to the space station. Well, now that they are working with the powers that be, they start to have a little bit more success. But they're only going to be allowed to have a certain amount of success. They will, um, you know, dur during the Apollo mission and, and some of these other corporate space uh, programs, they start having setbacks that just don't make sense. Something as simple as, um, from space, I'm creating a field around um, an area where they're doing experiments to where what would normally make sense in physics uh, to work just doesn't work, you know? And, uh, there's a lot of interference and a lot of setbacks that are um, uh, introduced by these different, uh, more advanced space programs, and it's mostly humans that are monitoring uh, what's going on in these different programs. Uh, uh, civilian programs. Um, now, uh, free energy, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, the holy grails. Well, if you have the ability to achieve uh, uh, an experiment that uh, creates a free energy uh, device, that d device puts off a field that they're monitoring for. So I don't care if you're 50 feet underground, you know, in a shielded environment, the minute you flip that on, they're gonna know where you are. They're gonna triangulate you very quickly because that same technology is used in uh, multiple different types of spacecraft, uh, both ours and theirs. They use that um, to be able to tell when a craft comes into our solar system. Uh, that, that technology puts off a certain signature uh, they, and they use it even um, kind of like a beacon for air traffic control. So, um, you know, there's interference in, in that way. The, the minute that anyone creates that type of device and turns it on, um, it, they're, they're going to be found immediately. No, you can't shield it. Hi. First of all, again, thank you for coming to uh, the East Coast. We really appreciate it. And thank you for your honesty for helping us um, along our spiritual journey also. Quick question, you talked about the karmic quick burn. So for those of us who are still working on our issues, one of the things you said about the solar flash was that it was gonna be 2018, 2023, somewhere around there. Uh, if the Anshar have already sort of gone into hiding, does that mean it's a little closer? They're feeling the effects. Now, the, this, um, they're expecting some sort of uh, 
a number of events, like it's not just one event they're expecting in, in this uh, time window. Uh, there are a number of things they're expecting. Now, the, um, the solar flare, you know, I get a lot of questions, you know, which is going to happen first? Is there going to be disclosures? Is there going to be a solar flare? Um, I don't know. We are co-creating what occurs together. So it's pretty much up to us. So it's a little different than, um, forgive me for bringing another person into this, but uh, the remote viewing from Ed Dames, who has a list of precursors, some of which have happened and some of which have not happened. Have you been given any information about precursor events before whatever that flash would be? Not that I can think of. Not, okay. uh, not necessarily precursor events, mm -hmm. but um, a ramping up of side effects from these uh, energies coming in. I mean, I was told, uh, uh, you know, keep an eye on the volcanoes. Mm -hmm. When you start seeing those popping all around the world, you know that uh, we're getting right. very close to, you know, the, uh, not only the solar flash, but um, there's a lot of uh, uh, geological changes that are going to occur on the earth that are going to be, you know, kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And one more question. Um, I know at one point you had asked about how many people are ready for ascension, and the answer was that it changes on any given day. Has that answer been any at different? At any given moment. It's like okay. it's a, a pulsing, breathing uh, thing, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Depending on any moment, uh, the number can be large or it can be small, because mm -hmm. uh, we throughout uh, throughout the day we go up and down right. you know so you have you know seven billion people on the planet going through the same thing right. and it's not necessarily going to happen all in concert so right. um, yeah that it's one of the things Kier tried to explain to me is that uh, it's it's like a pulsing mm -hmm. breathing uh, occurrence so stay in the moment is the message then right yeah stay in the moment thank you Stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. How you doing, Corey? Um, my question is touching on the remote viewing. Um, I understand when some people remote view or remote view influence, like if they pick up a photo, they only really can connect to the thing on the photo. Like, is there a way to uh, co-creatively um, remote view? Like, let's say we have someone with cancer and we have 25 people remote viewing to help them get rid of the cancer, but instead of doing something like that, obviously you said every time like a, a victory for the alliance is not very much like a big victory. Is there a way we can like uh, try and remote view to like these reptilians and try and transmute their intentions and emotions with love instead of like like trying to destroy them? Like, is that possible? Absolutely, it's possible. I mean. Being able to remote influence beings, um, you know, cancer, all of that is possible. We're co-creating this reality right now. You know, we're co-creating, you know, this, this little speck or whatever that's floating in the air that probably half of us have breathed in and breathed back out. On some level, we're co-creating that little speck. Uh, there's some sort of cohesion of consciousness that has agreed that these parameters of reality or what we're gonna work in. Well, we have the ability not only to co-create that bandwidth that we're existing within, we can manipulate this uh, uh, illusion of matter or disease or consciousness of different beings. But first of all, we need to reclaim that ability, you know, uh, developing uh, different remote viewing and influencing techniques is good. Um, but uh, yeah, we all have the ability. We're, uh, all these different beings that are also in our solar system, their mass consciousness is contributing to the co-creation of this reality that we're experiencing. So yes, we can definitely affect the, the consciousness and the vibration of, of other beings, even those that we perceive above us. So. Like, obviously, we are all one. Uh, galactically, would that mean the, you're saying, like, with the reptilian or God only knows what other consciousness is out there, that's separate than our own? Or is only the AI, like, even is that part of our collective consciousness? It's uh, affecting our collective consciousness. What I was told about this AI is that it came from another reality 
so far back in time that most of these ancient uh, non-terrestrial groups don't even know where it came from because it came about way before they came about. Thank you. Hi, Corey. Uh, again, thank you both for being here. Uh, yesterday, when we were talking about the meditation thing, um, and we talked about some of the difficulties of trying to coordinate it. Uh, I know like during the eclipse, Cobra and some other people all picked out a specific time. Um, and the uh, visual thought that came into my mind was if you've been at a circus and seen uh, a plate on a stick and people spinning it, well, I think the intention that you came up with as far as full disclosure is a simple intention that takes away a lot of the difficulties of getting too spread out. Uh, so much like cadence in the military where they break cadence when they cross a bridge, well, the, the grid that they're controlling or uh, energetically controlling, uh, maybe the answer is as simple as that if globally, worldwide, if everybody just agrees with an intention and every hour on the hour we spin the plate again, you know, it's 12 o'clock. Okay, peaceful, full disclosure. It's 1 o'clock, peaceful, full disclosure. If everybody does that throughout the, the global grid and just spins the plate a little bit more, just energizes that intention again, Maybe that's the, the fracking or whatever. It was just an idea that came, it was a visual uh, thing that I got off that intention. I don't know if that. That's interesting, thank you. That's kind of funny because um, I was just gonna say that. I came here with one of the questions that I wanted to ask was, well, why can't we just send out a time like if you and David are out there saying, all right, well, you know, at 11 o'clock, because there's people on the West Coast, people on the East Coast, we're going to set up a time, and then we'll post a, we'll post a, a subject or, a, or a, co a concept to meditate on. Because I know me, it's like I, I want to meditate every day, and I don't. Um, I think I would, I would find it helpful to know that if I'm missing from that meditation every day, then there's a sort of sense that I'm not putting in. But it would certainly engage me more, or at least I hope it would, but yeah, yeah I, I exactly agree. what he uh, said. But you know, we have all these different types of people out with different ideas on on things. Um, you know, uh, there are a large number of people that don't care for David or I. You know, but we need their co-creative abilities involved. So but you let them do that thing, and then you go, well, this is the subject. Did you choose yeah. it or not? Yeah. Well, like, what my point is is that. Uh, it needs to not come from just people like myself and David. It, it, we need to find some sort of, uh, uh, some, some way to have other people that do not agree with me and my information to, um, to put out the information as well, like the Times. But the way it is now, people, if I say something, and like we need to come together or we need to uh, put the information out there for have a, 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 a meditation at a certain time. Well, the people that disagree with me or David or, or not just me, but anyone else out there, they're going to sit back and cross their arms, you know, and I'm not going to contribute to that, you know. You only want the people who, are con who want to contribute, right? You don't. Yes, you don't but we, ne we need as many people as possible. And there are a lot of light workers that don't resonate with my information. But we need to find ways to um, get them on board. So we need to have not any one face, not this face, not right. David's face, on it, you know? So we need, it needs to be not all of us, you know, marching under one flag, but all of our individual flags, but, you know, marching uh, with the same intent. That's very difficult to do. I mean, I, that, what I've just described to you is a lot of what we've run into, you know? So we... Quick, quick say. Whether I like your face or David's face, I don't, it's like the reason why we're here is because there is some level we agree on, and and yeah, there are a lot of people out there who are, I wouldn't really want to agree with their stuff, and I, I wouldn't necessarily want to meditate in this in the same direction as that, and meditating. But 
in each group, you just set that up and then you just say, all right, well, for now, it's just whoever's interested. But I, but I think it is, it's like getting something started to get that energy up. It's going to take a group effort, you know, sure. a, a group effort. Well, and other people have to be motivated to, um, to do it as well. No, I mean, we're doing it. We're, we're getting people together, you know. But, uh, the, you know, the hundredth monkey effect needs to kick in a little bit better. You know, like, you know, other people having the same idea and not knowing where it came from. Yeah, we don't, you know. Yeah, we're coordinating uh, with a number of different groups. You know. Yeah, but, you know, there are people that have a very visceral reaction to Cobra, you know. So and if he comes up and says, we need a world peace thing, they'll be like, that's a good idea, but it's coming from this guy that I think is crazy, you know. We, we, you know, it's, that, that's been the difficulty that we've been running into, to be honest. Right, killing the messenger Yeah, trying, trying to coordinate all of this. There, you realize where this comes from, right? It comes from those Satan-worshipping, bluebird-talking, you know, people, of, you know, because all of this propaganda has gone out there. Um, it, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do, but it's something that, you know, it has to be done. We, you know, yeah, it has to be done. Or we're, we're not going to go anywhere. I kind of I wanted to nag you a little bit about uh, disclosure. Um, obviously, you can see lately that they've been following the partial disclosure timeline, whatever you want to call it, that they they agreed to, and that's it's shown by what you post on Facebook every day. Y you know, it's just a little little article here on like Yahoo News or just something something small, but they're very insignificant in the grand scheme of things. They go most. Mo mo um, mostly unnoticed to the normal person. They just, they don't even pay attention to it. So is that satisfying the need for them to have to disclose, disclose at, at a certain point, that partial disclosure that they're doing right now with the, the little tiny snippets, like the drip drip you're talking about in the news, is that satisfying things or is it gonna well, kick up anytime soon? What does satisfy me is that um, five years ago, we were still trying, talking about whether Roswell was real. Mm -hmm. uh, most people, if you mentioned the word disclosure, in their mind, they saw some sort of an official coming up and saying, aliens are real, yeah. dropping the mic and walking off stage. Mm -hmm. Now the conversation has completely changed. We're talking about partial disclosures, uh, full disclosure of all information. So changing the conversation has broadened the consciousness just of the, the ufology and esoteric groups alone. So yes, in the last, you know, three to five years, we've seen an expansion in what people perceive as disclosure. So, um, yeah, the ball is rolling, uh, and that makes many of us, you know, happy. But, you know, we've got to keep spinning that plate, I guess you could say. Is, is, is it going to, are they going to have to, like, step it up a notch in order to, because uh, like you said years ago, they, they were told they had to disclose, and then they're trying to do a partial disclosure. I mean, is, are they going to have to really step it up and disclose some of the, the real juicy stuff soon? I mean, is it coming to a point where they just, what they're doing just by throwing little things out in the news isn't working, or they're really going to have to kick it up? Well, what they're doing is working. They're planting seeds in the mass consciousness right. to uh, uh, then nurture later on. So the powers that be are giving us this partial information, pars these narratives that uh, will guide us towards their agenda. Um, at the same time that that's occurring, uh, pe people that are supporting that narrative are having a hard time in this community right now because of what I just said. People are like, okay, um, I want the full picture, not just this little narrow band you know, of information. Uh, before, five years ago, if they would have come out and said, and given these little drops of information, we would have been extremely happy. We would have said, wow, we're getting it, it's disclosure. Yeah. But now we're like, wait a minute. Our consciousness and ideas have expanded to where disclosure means something completely different than it did a number of years ago. And how they've profiled our society, uh, our profile has changed, you know. That, that doesn't, it's not working like, like they had hoped. You know, we're, we're not buying it. Is that going to help kind of maybe dis uh, destroy their partial disclosure narrative that they're trying to do? They're having a lot of difficulty with this partial disclosure narrative. There are a lot of skeptical people. Uh, it, it just makes sense. Once you open up Pandora's box, I mean, it's just it's not something you can close back up. So, I mean, to me, it's just idiotic thinking that they could slowly 
just disclose this or that or some narrative and not open up the whole thing. It just doesn't seem possible. I, I don't think it is possible anymore. I keep getting emails, and I did it a couple times with, um, there's a, someone who meditates worldwide, and it's online. It's Craig Hamilton from California, and um, it's called Integral Enlightenment. And I imagine, like, it doesn't matter what we meditate on, it, it helps. Um, and if we start doing that and can get certain intentions from him to do it with everyone, that's, it's already started and it's worldwide. So, and I know he's got a number of people on that. So that's one thing. And the other thing that had come up was about remote viewing. And I just recently saw um, a Project Camelot thing with Kerry Cassidy on remote viewing. And they talked about um, how they, they tried to remote view to um, one of the, uh, um, what do you call them? The Draco, with the uh, that being, and there's always blocks, and they have technology that can clear the blocks, but they can tell where that remote viewer is. Yeah, yeah, so. um, yeah. You got to be very careful. Uh, some of these beings are very powerful, um, psychically, I guess you would say. Uh, one of the things that I was warned about in the programs is that. If you put these beings in your consciousness, you're putting yourself in theirs. Um, you're, it's basically like a beacon, so you, you definitely need to be careful. I've, you know, people have, uh, um, now when, uh, in, in the programs, they have, um, I don't know what the, uh, the military term is for these people, but remote viewers would call uh, people that protected the bases those who scatter. And what they're talking about is that when you would try to penetrate one of these sites, these remote viewers and influencers that are using technology to enhance their abilities can sense you coming in and this cohesive thought that you're projecting there in, in, in the remote viewing, they're able to, to scatter it, disperse it, um, nullify it. And they're also able to tell where it's coming from. So yeah, you, you, it's... Um, I guess it's in vogue to, to try to uh, uh, remote view these different beings or different places, but you, d you have to be careful. Um, they can send, uh, they can even send back a um, uh, energy through that connection that you've made to that one place and give you uh, what they call an etheric hangover, which is an extremely bad headache, nausea, and it lasts for days. So yeah, you, you definitely need to be careful. And one of the things that happens is there's, in this community, there's always the person that's like, what, well, I've been doing this for 40 years. I'm more spiritually advanced than the average person. You know, I, can, I can handle it, you know? I, I've, I've run into that a lot, you know, the ego. And I'm like, well, you know, your, your ego shows that you maybe haven't done all that work, you know? <laughs> but, you know, try to tell the people that, you know? Um, so, you know, don't, overestimate your own divine power because we're all susceptible to, um, you know, to, to being attacked. Not, you know, you, just, you have to be careful when you're remote viewing or in, trying to re remote in, uh, influence or view these different beings or places. Hi, Corey. Uh, qu question on the kind of spiritual war between light and dark that's apparently going on both in the non-physical and the physical for quite some time that we're all talking about here in the physical side with the the cabal, the Illuminati, and maybe all the way to the top it's an AI and then it's an Archons and it's Draco and then all the way down at the bottom it's dark military. That's, as you said, those that are watching us and controlling us and looking at what we're doing and trying to manipulate us. I don't hear so much talk on the other side of the equation, the, 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 the white hats or the good guys or the alliance, where, where, that, where that starts from at the top compared to the AI, is, is that God? And then you take it down all the notches that are compared to is 
raw to air equal to that 14 foot tall, you know, lizard being that you, you know, had the encounter with? Does it, are they all negotiating at their levels of consciousness and, and, and then all the way down to the very bottom in physical sense, um, taking it down to society? I remember, I think it was a few months ago, you said that uh, you were given a briefing and they said that if Donald Trump was about to get into office or got into office, he would be, I think he said someone would stab him right there on stage and it would never be allowed to happen. Well, he's in office and stuff's going on and well and, yeah they said that was their intent now the um okay and this is where you get into this division stuff that we're all programmed with this left right paradigm bull crap it's all bull crap on both sides um what occurred was that the deep state stated that they were going to take out trump they were going to kill him the alliance told them if something happens to Trump, there's going to be an immediate coup, a military coup. So that put things at bay. But their intent was there was nothing, they were, they were not going to allow him to be elected. That was the information I received. Uh, and if he was elected, they were not going to let him uh, fulfill his term. So what happens now then? Well, what happens now is that we're sitting back waiting for this very covert shadow civil war to play out. Uh, 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 the briefings that I have are extremely disturbing about what is occurring between the deep state and uh, the alliance. Uh, not only here in the United States, but what's going on in Europe, if people knew, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would blow their minds. Yeah. So, um, Tell us something. <laughs> well, well, what you're seeing going on in Spain right now, you know, Catalonia, uh, all of that's being manipulated to cause division, and uh, uh, you know there. Uh, there's some of the stuff is, is just uh, kind of sensitive in this politically charged environment right now. I just avoid it because people are so programmed to have a visceral reaction. Trump, oh, you know that, uh, or uh, you know on the other side, you know the deep state, uh, you know, and anyone that's against Trump, they must be the deep state. Anyone that's you know, it's so polarized right now that. Um, you know, I, I try to stay away from the fine details because uh, it's... But that would mean he's on the side of the alliance and he's... He is alliance friendly. Alliance friendly. Is Trump very reddened much more than the news would say? Well, Trump, he's not, no, he has a... Uh, uh, the intelligence community has refused to read him in because they're afraid he's going to tweet it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but... Uh, th uh, he has not received anywhere near the presidential briefings that other presidents have. But if I know the stuff by listening to you, I would think he was also listening to Well, Senator. what yeah. may or may not surprise you is before he was elected, he was watching Cosmic Disclosure. Uh, General, uh, well, uh, some other people I was told were too. Um, now, he knows a lot of this because of his own family lore. His, what was his great uncle or his uncle, was the one who was sent in by the cabal to clear out Tesla's safe, all of the information. So since he was sitting on the knee of his dad or his uncle, he, he, he's been hearing these stories. And he's very much in a conspiracy theory. So I, he, is not, he is not read in, though. He desperately wants to be, but uh, no one will read him in. You know, I'm here listening and... I realize that we all have to work on ourselves, finding ourselves, healing ourselves, empowering ourselves, and that's the only way we're going to save the world. My only desire is to go out in the world and teach people how to tap into their power that they were born with, because you can heal yourself. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Totally agree. That's one of the things that we've talked about. Is you got to uh, change the world one person at a time. That person being yourself, you know. But I think a lot of the light workers, star seeds, whatever you want to call them, that are here, we didn't come here to tell people how to be. We came here to show them, you know, show them how to live in harmony with the earth. Show them how to. Uh, uh, go through hell and healing. You know? 
it's through these examples that we're going to change the world one person at a time. So I completely agree. I'm an example now. And that might be your whole mission. You know, it, 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 it upsets a lot of people when you tell them you chose this mission to come in because all of the abuse and horrible things that happened, they're like, screw you, I didn't choose this. But on some level, you chose to come through this and come through it alive and live through it. And then you're now able to show people, not just tell them. Because anyone, you know, lip service, people are sick of it. You've got to show people. Besides running the Bosnian Pyramid Project, I research pyramids all around the planet. Northern Spain, the town of Palencia, three circular pyramids. One, two, three. Their height, 74 meters. The Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, Mexico, 74 meters. Those three pyramids, they have the same layout like the pyramids in Teotihuacan, Sun, Moon, Quetzalcoatl. The same like the Giza pyramid, Cheops, Kefren, Maiseren. The same like the pyramids in Italy, Monte Vecchia. Of course, the church placed the statue on the top, and the church is here, so you cannot enter the tunnels. Now, Palencia is a very small town. Today, it's only about 10,000 people. In the 15th century, they built, not the church, but cathedral. Even for today's norm, it's a huge cathedral, which should be in Madrid or uh, Barcelona. Now, above the entrance, there is a pyramid ornament. Three sides, like a triangle. Inside the pyramid are the human faces. The royals, the rulers, military, farmers, kids, mothers. And above the pyramid are those two beings, one and two. Now, this was carved in the 15th century. Of course, today, in the last few decades, the Hollywood movies are bringing those predators, aliens. This is from the 15th century. Of course, we do have two legs two hands. Now you'll see the head with this long skull. It's not elongated human skull, obviously. This is very, very long skull. Look at the back. Again, we remember all those alien movies with Sigourney Weaver. So <laughs> this is really for you, <laughs> the question. <laughs> now we try to put the shape, the actual shape. Now we're not shape. Interestingly enough, the cathedral, which is here, is, is exactly on the north-south line from the pyramid. So the connection is there. The message is there. Who built it? And who is above the humanity? Hidden in plain sight, is what I was saying to him. Makes you wonder uh, whoever crafted uh, the uh, alien versus predator uh, depiction on movies, if they modeled it after some of these ancient uh, carvings, because it's right, it's pretty dead on. Yeah, thank you for that. I'd, uh, and interestingly enough, uh, next year I, we're doing a conference in Valencia, uh, so this information is. Uh, oh. Oh, Palencia. It's north from Valladolid. It's a very small town. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Okay. Hi. Um, I have a, a question. I don't know if you touched on this yesterday, but it's pretty dear to my heart. Uh, as far as us spiritually advancing, I genuinely feel that we will not be able to unless we address the whole satanic pedophilia sacrifice of our children, and whether it be on earth or off earth. And my struggle is every single day with meditation, and I know that we all need to collectively get together and meditate. What I see 
is trying to visualize the outcome of what, when we spiritually advance and when we move into different um, realities and move with earth and connect with earth. But what can we do in order to put an end to that? I'd really try to envision the children being free because, you know, even if right, right now there's children that are being tortured and even if they were set free, then what happens to them at, that, at this point? So, I, I, you know, what do we do? What do we do with this? I have two children and I don't want to live in fear of this but it's very prevalent and it's something that no one talks about. It's starting to right now. But I think that that's another one of the full disclosures that if the human race really found out the depth and the magnitude of what is going on with our children and why these beings need this type of energy and what they do to the children for this energy, I, I, I just, I don't know if the human race is going to be able to handle it. No, they're not. That's why I say, yesterday I asked who all is looking forward to disclosure, and the whole room raised their hand. And I said, be careful what you ask for. It's not going to be a big kumbaya kind of moment. If we get full disclosure, it's going to be the most sickening moment of human history. But it's something, you know, I, I stated, all evolution occurs through stress. And we're going to need that stressor to be able to evolve past it. You know, and uh, the, the those if people really don't understand how systemic these satanic pedophiles are. Most of us have, uh, that have supported different politicians or whatever, and we fought for them pumping fists. Well, you know, we've, when we find out that we put all of our energy behind supporting one of these sickos, you know, we're going to feel responsible as well. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a process that's uh, very, very difficult for us to go through. And um, at this point, you know, we're kind of waiting for the alliance to expose more and more of it because everyone's so conditioned right now that, uh, you know, uh, if the news tells us that it's uh, a conspiracy theory, most of the people are going to be, oh, okay, you know, it's a conspiracy theory, you know. It's, we're, we're just at the beginning of exposing all of that, and I've had a very detailed and long briefing, and I, I have two children, that I, I just wanted to lay in bed, stay in bed afterwards. I mean, I was just sick. And I've heard and seen just about anything you could think of. But people think they know what's going on, and it's horrible. But it's just the very, very tip of the iceberg. Even those of us who know about the pedophilia thing and know of the different things that are going on, we're going to be shocked. It is, it is that insidious. Will it, will, will it end? Like, will, will it end? Well, it'll take a lot of work because the victims usually uh, perpetrate the crime later on in life because they don't get the right counseling, the right environment. So all of that depends on us, how we handle and how we help uh, the victims. Uh, that's where you end the chain, is with the victims. That cycle is ended with the victims. Uh, but exposing it and helping the victims heal and develop a modicum of a normal life, is, it, that's going to be on us. I want to add to what Sharon brought up. We cannot, and I believe this with all my heart, we can't develop spiritually until we expose this underbelly of pedophilia. And it was brought to my attention by the extraterrestrials. There are ETs that are working with the Alliance that are, we do have a lot of help. Now, the first episode that I saw on Cosmic Disclosure with you and David Wilcock, my mouth was hanging open. My mouth opened and I was shocked. Okay, that night the ETs contacted me and they showed me a humanoid reptilian standing next to Adolf Hitler. And I have family that was killed by Hitler. And behind that was an ethereal Trump. Now, this was before Trump won the election. And what they disclosed to me at that time was that Trump, whether you like him or not, is going to expose this. He's not part of the cabal. He is going to expose this, and there's going to be trials. 
There's going to be trials of the people that are running our government that are committing these crimes. You don't get elected unless you agree to commit these crimes. And we need to wake up to this. And I get downloads confirming everything you're saying. And I know about all the infighting with Kerry, whatever, and, and um, the people that, you know, Bill, Ryan, and the people that were disputing what you were saying. It was told to me that what you were saying is the truth. And a lot of people had a hard time because of the 20 year and back. That whole mind bending thing with the time is hard even for me to, at this point, to even believe, but I know you're telling the truth. I knew it from the time I listened to you that you were telling the truth. And I get confirmation on what you're saying, and I get confirmation on the pedophilia and on what's going on with the government. Yes, and I agree totally, of course. But, you know, we're also, no matter how much we think we've grown, we're still responsible in contributing to some of this uh, larger karmic issue. There are, uh, like the United States, uh, we have not dealt with uh, what was done to the Native Americans and the indigenous African people. We have not dealt with it. The people, you know, back during that time that were actually responsible for it, there was no apology or karmic cleansing. They just kicked the can down the road. Well, then their grandkids were like, well, I'm not responsible for that, so they kicked the can down the road. Well, that is a major karmic issue for us collectively in this country, and other countries have it as well. So we have, we have the pedophiles and the Satanists that are controlling and doing all this stuff that uh, you know, we need to expose, but then there's also, this, we need to circle around and start to deal with the, just what I said was just an example. There are other, many other things. Uh, until we deal with that, we're going to hit a glass ceiling spiritually as well. I want to thank you for what you said. Um, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And I believe that ties in with what you said about the war behind the scenes. Uh, so uh, we have a lot to look forward to. Uh, change the subject just a little bit. I want to make sure that I understood what you said earlier about the secret space program in RA, where they were telling you to avoid RA, the theories, uh, teachings. And uh, how was that communicated to you, or who communicated that to you? And how did you change and discover uh, that that was false? Well, it was in the programs, that we, uh, the secret space program, it was communicated by superiors. And uh, even the scientists would discuss it sometimes uh, when, when they would be standing around talking, you know, mm -hmm. it would come up. Uh, they would say that uh, it's, you know, Luciferian and all this stuff, which would give me, I grew up in a, mm -hmm. a Christian environment, it, I had a visceral reaction to it, and it worked very well with me. Um, I began, and I, and, and I looked into it a little bit here and there, I, I hadn't, you know, really read it. And I wasn't able to read it. When I would try to read it, the words would hover above the page. There was some sort of block that was occurring. Uh, now, of course, David Wilcock was just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it with me all the time. You need to read it. You need to read it. Um, the, the blue avians are saying the exact same thing that Ra did, you know, that kind of stuff. And I was just, I would have a reaction. I'd be like, ooh, you know. Um, but once I was actually able to read it, it, had a, it did have a profound effect on me. It sounds like it's a, a kind of a negative thing against the secret space program if they're, well, if they're well, well like I said, way. it's compartmentalized, it's manipulated, right. it's controlled, okay. um, and everyone, I mean, every, everyone in this room is mind controlled. Well, and yeah. within those programs, people are definitely, if not mind controlled, they're put into a, a box. Okay. You know, sounds you like can't a negative think box, outside so. the box. Sounds well, like yeah. a negative box. So. Of course. Uh, just a follow up on uh, the uh, like Solar Warden. Uh, they used to protect the colonies on Mars, according to, to Randy Kramer, uh, and basically they were working for the ICC. Now they're saying that they're protecting Earth. Uh, what changed, and where are they getting their financing to protect Earth? The um, they were not protecting the Mars bases per se. Uh, Solar Warden was a group that was developed to monitor uh, the solar system, to monitor it, uh, anything that came in and went out. Before Solar Warden, 
we basically had to petition ETs for certain things. And we had no control over who was getting abducted on the planet, what ETs were coming on our planet. We had zero control. Once we developed these space programs, we uh, had not only advanced um, craft, but advanced uh, detection technology and uh, monitoring technology, as well as weaponry. And we were then able to police or warden our own solar system. That was the purpose of Solar Warden. Well, who did the, uh, like Randy's group, uh, the super soldiers on Mars, who were they working for and how were they getting paid? They don't get paid. Okay, well, uh, how were their expenses met? Well, you have, um, on, uh, depending on the level, if you go up to the military industrial complex I'm not talking programs, about payroll. I, I know, I'm working soldiers. my way up. I'm working yeah. my way up. A lot of that is financed by um, uh, the drug trade and, you know, different things like that, uh, you know, finding ways to get money from the taxpayers. Uh, now, on the higher levels, they're not a part, they're a completely breakaway civilization. They're not a part of our financial system. Our financial system does not support them. A lot of what they're getting material-wise is from the ICC's ability to build technologies and trade them off to other non-terrestrial races and harvesting and mining minerals in, uh, diff on different planetoids and in the uh, asteroid belt. They have a completely breakaway civilization that is not tied to ours in any way other than they're pulling assets. Okay, because I'm looking at the moral aspect because that's slave labor up there. Yeah. And we have the uh, secret, uh, the super soldiers protecting them and apparently, like you're saying, ICC's uh, financing uh, them being there. Uh, were the super soldiers part of the solar uh, warden program? Well, um, now, the, the super soldier thing has been very convoluted in, uh, since the information came out. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of the things that they, it was very successful. There were a handful of very legitimate uh, super soldiers, but you know, they didn't jump out of airplanes and land on their feet. All this stuff is a bunch of bull crap. You know, they, were very in, they were very enhanced human beings, but they were not, they, they were not superhumans. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, but, I'm, talk, I'm referring to what Randy Kramer has been saying. Okay. Um, uh, genetically engineered soldiers. Uh, uh, that, uh, like Randy Kramer, he said there were 300 of them that were taken there uh, to protect the colonies against uh, the inhabitants. Yeah, I worked alongside at times the uh, security force that mm -hmm. was protecting the colonies. Right. And they were extremely specially trained and they had chemical and genetic enhancements, but. Um, they were still very human. Well, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, a, lot of, a lot of magical stuff has been built up around the super soldier okay. thing. Yeah, I was uh, trying to get some information about the morality of it all. Uh, well, you know, because if you're now, looking for the, now, now they're saying that they're protecting the earth. They're, they're morally bankrupt. Okay. You know, there, there is no morality, you know. Uh, a lot of the, the, the when it comes, the Mars is such an oppressive place mm. that that the energy there is that of like a prison. Okay. But if these super soldiers were, who are now not protecting the colonies, if they were a part of Solar Warden, uh, sorry to belabor the point, uh, and now Solar Warden is saying that they're protecting the Earth, um, what, the, where's the transition? They were not, they are, these, uh, these security forces, are, they're corporate. They are not a part of Solar Warden. I'm sorry, uh, if, if, okay. if people have said otherwise, they are not. They are corporate. Um, they're corporate forces, okay. ICC forces. They, uh, Solar Warden is a Navy program, and uh, they do have uh, Marines. Um, well, they call them the Marines, but they're made up of people from all the different branches, um, you know, that serve in, you know, the, these uh, marine, uh, marine, I can't remember, the, the, the recon expeditionary force that they, uh, that they called them. Special it's, section. Uh, and it, it, it is a special section, but that's not uh, what they were referred to to me anyway. Okay. Well, okay. All right, well, thank you. I'm yeah. taking up But when time. you're looking into the morality of it, uh, yeah, Mars is, uh, there's a lot of slave labor going on there, and a lot of, um, they, they choose a lot of, you know, psychopaths to help run it. Well, my concern was the same people that were there.
year. Um, how does the transition occur? Yeah, no, well, the, they do cycle in people in these corporate uh, military programs and cycle them back through the 20 and back programs. No. They profile, they profile people for different projects and jobs. No, Solar, well, you know, Solar Warden, like I said, is not who you were referring. They're ICC, in, in, planting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but Solar Warden was not on the surface of Mars, protecting Mars, uh, providing material or human support on, on Mars. No. Who? Solar Warden is, pol is doing their mandate of policing the solar system and monitoring what comes and goes into our solar system. Well, it's all perspective. You know. uh, these ETs that, you know, uh, some people will have a positive experience, some will have a negative experience with the same ET group. And it, a lot of it is perspective. And so I have a quick question for you guys, <laughs> Dr. Sam. A lot of the work I've mentioned to you, uh, my buddy Josh and I, we work with Drumblow and Melchizedek, and our focus is on what heart math calls heart coherence. And being able to see these fields coming out the heart, uh, these fields are 5,000 times stronger than the mental fields. So the idea is to, hey, let's get out of the head because it's duality, let's drop into the heart. So the question is, I think you mentioned to me there's somewhere around 50,000 volunteers that have been down to the, was that correct in that? No, in the last eight years, 2,900 volunteers okay. from 62 okay. countries and six continents. Awesome, okay, sorry about that. My question to you is, you obviously must see people have huge transformations when they walk into these pyramids. And is, do you hear the rep repetitive um, sharing that it's a heart-based thing, or can you elaborate a little bit on, on that? Thank you. This summer we had eight shifts, eight groups, June, July, August, September. I received every one of them, and usually I'm the one who showed them the locations before they start volunteering. And I always ask them the same question, why did they come to Bosnia to volunteer on the Bosnian pyramids? And I'm always getting the same answer. When I first hear about Bosnian pyramids, I felt something inside. I had this inner you know, need, inner call to come to Bosnia. Doesn't matter whether they are from Peru or New Zealand or South Korea or Turkey or Germany or US or Canada. So obviously this topic vibrated with them when they first heard about it. They came to Bosnian pyramids after 10 days or 30 days or seven days. They all talk about the life-changing experience. And uh, our project started as the archaeological project 12 years ago. And today it has become the most active archaeological site in the world. But then it was not enough. So we started applying a lot of other scientific disciplines, interdisciplinary scientific projects. And then we started with the energy aspects, engineers, physicists, sound engineers. And then we noticed that this energy is affecting our energy fields, our auric fields, spiritual aspects. And then the self-healing aspects. Mm -hmm. And the volunteers actually, they go through all these different aspects. Mm -hmm. And they are telling us when it comes to self-healing, yes, they can notice that, you know, the, the big improvement in their health. When it comes to spirituality, yes, they realize, you know, we are not only physical, but spiritual beings also. And then they share information. They talk to each other. They, you know, share the knowledge. And so, the whole new world opened for them. And it seems to me, if you're looking at our souls as the different stage souls, you have infant and baby souls and youth and uh, you know, mature and old souls, it seems to Bosnia mostly old souls and mature souls mm -hmm. are coming. And we know that uh, you know, not all 7.4 billion people will come to Bosnia to experience the Bosnian pyramids. But 50,000 souls every year, and then 50,000 next year, and it'll be a huge impact mm -hmm. globally. 
So, yes, they all tell us why they came. They all, well, of course, you know one of them who was in Bosnia uh, this year, and you can see how, you know, enlightened, how happy, how, I mean, he sees us, oh, I love you, I love you. That's really the main thing we have over there. I even named one of the pyramids, the Pyramid of Love. Sun, moon, dragon, earth, love, love. Archaeologists are attacking me for different reasons. And then for this, why did you name, why did you give such romantic name? They don't realize that the words are powerful, and the most powerful is the word love. So when you name one huge structure, the pyramid of love, the idea is to color the valley with the love. And this is the type of messages we are sending out to the world. So yes, this is very powerful experience. In, and that's why we have so many people coming back. I mean, Bosnia, it's so far. I mean, you go to Europe, I mean, you go to London or Paris or Amsterdam or, <laughs> but you know, people are coming to Bosnia. I uh, want to say uh, thanks to both of you for being here and putting out the information that you've been doing. It's been just fantastic, I think, for the whole community. Um, I have a question about what's going on in Antarctica. I've seen some photos of alleged pyramids down there, and I've known that you've talked about uh, your visits to Antarctica. Are the things that you saw in Antarctica, are they related to those pictures of the pyramids we've been seeing, or is that something totally different? Uh, I'm, I'm told that a number of pyramids have been located down there and uh, that, that they are related to the civilization that was in, on Antarctica before um, it was covered with ice. Um, now, one of the, I mean, it's interesting though, you know, I reported about uh, being brought down under the ice to these big ice caverns uh, that, it, that, that were created by geothermal heat. Um, and uh, we're starting to get little bits and pieces of that information. You know, recently they, um, a, a bunch of scientists just released a video of uh, the uh, caverns, ice caverns, uh, stated that they were created by geothermal heat, that it was, you know, 20 degrees Celsius under there. You can swim in the pools. You can, you can be in a swimming suit, in a bathing suit under there. So this information is slowly trickling out to us. Um, I, I would definitely like to hear what he has to say about the pyramids, if he's looked into them. Of course, pyramids are built all over the planet. They're telling us about Egypt, Mexico, Peru, but they're in China, 250 Shanxi pyramids. Indonesia, 29,000-year-old pyramid in Western Java. Cambodia, Kohher pyramid. Island of Mauritius, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Sudan, 224 of them, Egypt, 155, Sicily, 43, Canary Islands, 104, Peru, 300, Central America, tens of thousands, Cahokia pyramids here in states, 250 of them in the state of Illinois. Antarctica, well, I haven't been there. Those that I mentioned, I've been on all those places. Antarctica, I saw photos, like probably most of us. We can see two rather regular sides. Maybe there are four, maybe there are three. And then some other photos are showing three pyramids. Probably they wanted to relate to Egyptian or Teotihuacan pyramids. But I've learned in my life not to trust photographs. So unless we have an independent verification, I cannot say yes or no. And of course, I'd like to go there. But since we know that at one point, Antarctica was not icy continent, uh, that it did have greenery and vegetation. We know that even the stone ball phenomenon was present there. Somebody was, you know, uh, shaping those big spherical balls. We know that the presence of civilization was there at least 100,000 plus years. So it's very possible that the pyramids were there, yes. Of course, we know about the uh, history with the Nazis going there during 1930s and the, the bases, you know, about 47 and 48, and, uh, you know, Americans fighting them, so, yes. But my experience there is very, very limited, just on what I can read. 
I have a question for both of you, actually. For the um, giant skeletons, what what kind of details do you have? I saw pictures, but I cannot ask anybody around me. <laughs> well, or if you're talking about the very large skeletons, yes. uh, those were a hoax. Um, they were done as a like a, a class type project, a Photoshop kind of thing. Um, now there are uh, giant skeletons that have been found uh, f going, you know, back into the 1800s, and they, and they would put it on the uh, in the newspapers at the time. But you know, they were, you know, giants. You know, most of the people during that time were like five and a half feet tall. So these giants were anywhere from six and a half up almost to eight feet tall. That you know, or around eight feet tall that they were located, that they were finding. Um, now. There are still, I've spoken to several Native American uh, groups that they know where some of these uh, remains are to this day. But they keep it a secret because they know that someone will come and just take them away and, and desecrate them and uh, throw them in the ocean or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, the, the, the very large skeleton photos you see of giants are not real. But different civilizations, they have different sizes. That's what I know. Yeah, I mean, there, there, were, um, there was a um, civilization of uh, red-haired, six-fingered giants that controlled uh, especially the eastern part of the United States going down uh, into Central America. There was a civilization that was around for quite some time and um, at, during the last ice age, they seem to have almost completely perished. Those who survived after the ice age uh, were in com extreme survival mode, became what we would call cannibals, uh, were living in deep caverns and caves. Uh, a lot of the times, Native Americans, if they would find out where they were, they would put a, a nice big bonfire at the mouth of a cave and suffocate them. Uh, there, there was not a, uh, uh, they were not a positive group. Hey, Corey. What was, sorry. I'm sorry. what was scientifically proven when it comes to giants? Uh, the last quarter of the 19th century, when the Smithsonian Institute was established, the first task their teams had was to travel the US, checking those uh, tumulus or tumuli phenomenon, and uh, destroy them the earthworks. And uh, all the archaeological material and all the remains to remove and hide. So we do have some interviews in, especially some local Chicago newspapers from 1882, 80, 83, and so on, where those teams explain that they did find the skeletons, eight to 12 feet. They took them to Washington, D.C., and of course, uh, they were never exposed to the public because Smithsonian was not established to show, but to hide. So 1% they show, 99%, like in those Indiana Jones movies, they're really placed in those huge underground warehouses. So this is what you know we can trace and we can say, yes, they were found there. And interestingly enough, they were found here on the American continent. But then in a lot of civilizations, a lot of societies, they do talk about giants. But we don't have a physical proof that you know we can say, yes, these are the moons. Sometimes our friends like Klaus Dona or Tellinger, they do find some things, but then uh, I guess they stopped halfway trying to, you know, prove the, the thing uh, to the end. And like he said, uh, what we can find on internet, sometimes people send those PowerPoint presentations with the big, big, uh, you know, uh, skeletons and archaeologists there. Yes, they are photoshops, they are fake. Going back to uh, kind of, you know, waking the uninitiated, uh, it probably seems mundane to everybody in this room, but the recent release of all the JFK files, is that a good foothold? I feel like even just talking to my parents, there's things that they probably wouldn't have believed about the CIA, and it, you know what I mean, in terms of getting a foothold into the larger picture. I, I don't expect a smoking gun in that information, but the fact that as they're releasing it, they're saying we're doing it for full disclosure, is an interesting term they're using. Uh, but I think that what it's going to do is stimulate 
people's consciousness. They start thinking about the conspiracy theory stuff again. But, um, I mean, I expect some interesting revelations to occur, but I don't expect anything groundbreaking. What's the best email to contact you if we run across technology information that we want to share? Uh, SphereBeingAlliance at gmail.com. I just want to know if either one of you know about crystal skulls and what their purpose is. The uh, only thing I know is what I've heard uh, since, you know, they've come to the public view. Uh, you know, the 13 different skulls, you know, the Mayan prophecy thing. I, I don't know anything that you wouldn't know. Okay, they have seen some shows where some of the people that are in possession of them, because they, the skulls, they choose, they, they choose to watch it over them. So I don't know if you or can do anything about those. Yeah, I've been present on several of them. Some of them are in Houston, where I used to live for 25 years. Some in Canada, some different places. When it comes to their origin, yes, uh, most of them are found in the Mayan world. And the Mayan, you know, tribal leaders would sell them uh, because of the money situation. So now, uh, you know, there are several which are, you know, they are the famous in the world. Uh, when you are in their present, it seems that they, that, that you can use all your five physical senses, you know, to get, you know, certain uh, reactions. Uh, you can smell, you can hear, you can see, you can see the change of the colors. So they are very, they are very, they're made in very intelligent way. Sometimes in rather unusual way, because people who shape the crystal, they will say, oh, you never, you would never do this like that, but it's been done that way, meaning it, yeah, meaning it was very high technology how they were made. Then they, the way they are polished, they're saying using our instruments and tools, it would take 300 years to polish it so smooth and stuff like that. So obviously they are product of very advanced civilization. And those from the Mayans, it seems that they were getting them a uh, really long, long time ago. When it comes to the Mayan world, of course, they're not only 3,000 years, like they're telling us. They are direct descendants from Atlanteans. In Belize, we found places with domestic, uh, domesticated corn 7,500 years old. So I would say there is a really uh, direct connection, Mayans now and 12,000 years plus back. And I would say they were, in, um, they were having this technology to make those crystal skulls. And which would, you know, uh, storage information and so yeah, they were very powerful. Whether there are 13 of them or it is just a legend, or yeah. we do know that there are many more, more than 13. So maybe 13 major or something like that. Some of them I even found in Tibet. So it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Is anybody else microphone? Okay. <laughs> I, I had a question in regards to just kind of s spiritual development. Other people have already kind of touched on it. But, um, and I'll be brief. I was raised very strict, strict Catholic, and I don't want to bash anybody that is. I, I still find a lot uh, of worth in it, and I still have belief in it. But there's so much that I see now as fear control and just programming and mind control and you know I kind of <laughs> years ago was reading a lot of Jim Mars and I kind of you face the gauntlet you hear a lot of crazy stuff um, and then you kind of just okay it's out there it is what it is and you get over it but for the people that are still in that conditioned uh, mindset how and some of my siblings even very religious still how do you kind of address that with them in a way, in maybe your guys' experience, that isn't bashing any kind of belief system, but just saying you have to deprogram certain things that are within just your mindset, your, your comfort zone, and look beyond it? it just, it's a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? yeah. I mean, yeah. because, you, are alone. you know, it's when... You can get people to agree that yeah, religions are, uh, yeah, maybe they were set up in a positive way, but then, you know, they were, they were then used quickly by the cabal to control people and all this stuff. And people will nod and they'll be like, yeah, that's true about your, your, and your religion, but not mine. You know, I mean, I mean people are so entrenched in that. Um, 
I don't know if those types of conversations are going to be received at all, even, uh, you know, uh, pretty much what my family is, you know, I, I have a number of people, a number of people that are convinced the earth is 7,000 years old. I mean, the nothing I say, nothing I say is going to convince them otherwise, you know. So I think it's pretty much we just we need to focus on ourselves. Uh, you know, a lot of my family has been trying to figure out, wow, you know, he's he's not going to church every Sunday, but he's going through this weird metamorphosis and, you know, he's starting to become more spiritual and, and his family life is better and all these things are improving, but uh, he's not doing it the way we trained him to, you know. I think we have to be examples more than trying to speak to people because, you know, especially people that are completely indoctrinated, they're, they're just going to shut you down, you know, and shame you. Plus, if they say you've got to go to a building and you say, well, the Bible says my body is a building and I am inside. <laughs> Our society is based on fear. In academia, if you're a student, you fear your professor. Assistant professor, again, fear the professor. They don't want to say something wrong. Professors, of course, fear deans or rectors. In corporate world, if you're a young guy, you know, you fear what you're going to do, what you're going to say, because your supervisor is looking. Your supervisor is fear, you know, of the manager or VP and so on. In media world, the journalist, they need to make sure what they're going to write, the news, so editor, you know, will not criticize them or fire them. Fear. The basic fear is fear of losing the life, the physical death. And based on that fear, all other fears are coming. Fears of losing the job, losing the money, losing the mortgage, losing the house, losing the car, losing the loved ones. Fear, fear, fear. We need to change that. If we go back to the ancient, ancient, ancient civilizations, we would realize that they were more spiritually advanced. What does that mean? They knew that we have, of course, our physical body for one use only. But also we have our soul, which is almost, you know, eternal. And we have our spirit. Once you realize that your soul will live through so many lives, there is no need to fear. Why should you fear? You won't die. Why should you fear of losing your job? Why should you fear of losing your home? So once you live the life without the fear, then this is not what elites don't want. Because without that, they cannot control us. They cannot manipulate us. When it comes to spirituality, back in Europe, they were teaching us spirituality equals religious. Wrong. Spirituality is development of our spiritual senses. So we can sense the world beyond the physical reality. With our physical senses, we sense physical reality. We see, we hear, we touch. With our spiritual senses, we can then feel much, much more. Five physical and 30 spiritual senses. First of all, every physical has its counterpart on spiritual aspect. So these are first five spiritual senses. But then, ability to directly communicate, telepathy, spiritual sense. Ability to see the aura field, spiritual sense, the colors in aura, which of course tells a lot about us, spiritual sense. The power to move objects with the power of our mind, telekinesis, spiritual sense. The power to move through space and time and different densities, teleportation, a spiritual sense. At one point in the time, over 12,000 years ago, before the end of the last ice age, when our planet was much stronger, when the natural energy places were much stronger than today, then the pyramids were much stronger, producing very strong energy fields. And you could move through them. Teleportation. So once you develop your spiritual senses, then you can live in a balance, physical and spiritual aspect. And then you become free. And this is what they don't want us to be. They don't want us to be free. We free ourselves, then everybody is becoming free, and then you have society based on free women and free men. The project we have in Bosnia, 
it's of course archaeological, it's scientific, but much, much more. You go to those tunnels, people start feeling stuff with their hands. They start feeling energies. We start feeling, we start developing our spiritual abilities. Two major things that we have over there. We are proving that the pyramid energy is actually clean, unlimited, and free. Based on the shape, geometry of the pyramid, based on elements of sacred geometry, based on using existing natural sources, free energy. That energy beam going through the top of the Sun Pyramid, 28 kilohertz, the same frequency used by Nikola Tesla 100 years ago in the Wardenclyffe Tower to transport the energy between two planets. And as he said, unlimited quantities of energy, thousands of horsepowers, regardless of their distance, 28 kilohertz. The Bosnian pyramid builders knew about this particular frequency 30,000 years ago. And Tesla got it through his experiments, successful and unsuccessful. So, free energy, the first pillar of the free society. And free flow of knowledge, the second pillar of the free society. I, um, <clears throat> in the beginning, uh, the way Cosmic Disclosure was structured, it was really revealing a lot of information about the secret space program and what the technology looked like and uh, kind of what a day in the life like was there. And it seemed to have evolved to more um, validating the existence of the programs, kind of covering the material by what William Tompkins and um, other people there, and most recently with the um, Indian tribes. But do you know if the show will take a direction going back to um, revealing the technology that was used and ways that it will be applied to society by and large? I hope so. I am not exactly sure what we're doing right now. When uh, we reached pretty much the end of my testimony of, mm -hmm. my, of what you know, I had experienced. And then after that, the show transitioned into uh, bringing in people to validate that information. Mm -hmm. um, right now, Cosmic Disclosure is about to take a short production break because we're going to reboot the set and change it up. And it's going to come back uh, even better. Mm -hmm. uh, now, content-wise, we're discussing a lot of um, not only validating uh, the information the way we have in the past through different authors, um, experiencers, and, and whatnot, uh, but we're also going to start uh, uh, also covering like what has come out in the news that uh, corroborates uh, with uh, my earlier testimony. Uh, and like there are a, a number of new whistleblowers that we're <coughs> vetting to talk to. Um, there's some that are coming forward that have some promise, uh, but you know, uh, I'm being extremely careful uh, when it comes to insiders because uh, they're the last attack that was used on uh, to, to, to kind of bring th down my information was not successful because they were basing it off of uh, a psychological profile three years ago before I went through this metamorphosis. So I have to be careful of them bringing in uh, a person that has a really good story and maybe some documentation or that, you know, and uh, me saying, yeah, I think they're real, and then them blowing up in public. So, uh, <clears throat> and, all, and, and this disclosure stuff is way bigger than me in my testimony. What we're hoping to do is get in more whistleblowers, uh, also talk to people who have been, uh, who've worked in the military industrial complex, to discuss these technologies, um, how they're being developed, wh how far they've been developed in the background. But uh, we have pretty much reached the end of my testimony of, of the experiences I had. The show was developed around my experiences, of course. Right. But the show is taking a another evolution. And not only that, but uh, uh, when I go back, on, in, like the second week of November, uh, we're shooting my new show, and it's going to be called Above Cosmic. And uh, if you notice in, in the first shows, um, not only was I in a different state than I am now, <laughs> but uh, David was interviewing me, and he was taking the conversation in, in whatever direction you know, he thought was pertinent at the time. Mm. What we're going to do is I'm going to uh, cover a lot of that testimony again, but I'm going to give all of these details that were skipped over. Right, right. Um, 
That's kind of really where I was going because a lot of the material that you were um, communicating on first, especially talking about the replicators and um, a lot of the other technology that was in these programs, uh, I would have wanted to hear a lot more about that and see if there was people who had approached you or, or if, if people are attempting to replicate this technology now um, with, the, with the current advancements. And, and one more question. Uh, have you heard anything more from Sigmund? Not a, not a word from Sigmund. I, I'm not real interested in actually seeing him again, to be honest. <laughs> you know, I mean, the guy chemically interrogated me and caused me to give up three people that I, would, I didn't want to give up. So, uh, you know, uh, you know I, of course, the loving side of me hopes he's okay, but uh, the, uh, I guess, jaded side of me is uh, good riddance. Uh, mine's a simple question for the doctor. Um, I just got a four-foot pyramid that I'm going to put inside the house. I got a table, no nails, and I'm getting ready to level the table and align the pyramid. And what I'm going to make is pyramid water for health. But my question, it's, I think, 72 or 74 degrees, not in the 40s like the big ones. What happens to that energy that's going to go through my roof? <laughs> you know, I, I did not think of it till I watched your presentation, and I'm thinking, what's going to happen to the roof? You're going to have a leak. <laughs> <laughs> so you were here yesterday? Yes. Now you could see that uh, there are many elements, not just the shape of the pyramid. Of course, yes. the shape is number one, the right. most important. The second one, the material. Number three, orientation. As long as you orient it to the cardinal points, east, west, north, south, it's going to be working. Well, I screwed, Why am I saying that? I screwed that? up there. Thanks. I was so anxious right. to try it yes. that I took a compass. Now, you're supposed to get it within a tenth of a degree. Eh, I was close. That's okay, as long as it is close. Yeah, but I drank the water, and boy, that was really bad. So <laughs> my inside shook and all <laughs> kinds of stuff. So I'm really going to work on getting the pyramid aligned perfectly because yes. it somehow screwed, excuse me, screwed up the water. <laughs> Why is alignment important? Our planet is a huge energy ball. The, the energy flows from the planet. The strongest is north-south. The second strongest is east-west. You make four-sided pyramid perfectly aligned to the cardinal points. You initiate energy movement within the pyramid you have three energy flows. One is energy beam going through the top. The second one, energy flow within the pyramid, hitting one third of the height, going to th thirds, coming back to one third, and completing the circle. If you are exposed to this energy, yes, it is going to improve the molecular structure. Yours, if you are inside, and king's and queen's chamber in the Great Pyramid of Egypt, are exactly on the way of this energy flow, but it also improves molecular structure of everything. Plants, animals, water, objects, anything. So yes, you, this is what you need to do. That's why you're putting the, you're placing the water inside. The water starts vibrating higher. When we hate, we vibrate low. When we are violent, when we are jealous, we vibrate low. When we are open-minded, we love everyone we vibrate high. When we drink the water, if it is our you know, kitchen water, you know, city water, with the chlorine and fluorides and traces of heavy metals, it vibrates very low. We drink it, pulls us down. If it is you know, clean water, if it is you know, energized water, vibrates high, of course, then you know, our vibration go up. Uh, we measure the Bosnian pyramid water, First of all, it is clean, a lot of negative ions, exposed to the best pyramid energies, original Schumann resonance, 7.83 hertz, 28 kilohertz electromagnetism, the levitation ultrasound frequency, water remembers, it vibrates very high. We drink it, we know we solve our problems. But bear in mind that Bosnian